met a gypsy. We roll them. Oh, dope intro. We'll just go <laughs> off Janae's intro. The hollow point is in the building. What's going on, legend? Nothing bring, much. Bring this up close. Let's yeah, let's, let's get it in let's there. Figure it out. What's going on? Just living the dream. What's going on with you? Same, mate. Eh? Yeah, just, it looks like it. it. Yeah, yeah. It this, like it's it. cool. Like you're one of the OG Gypsy Tales fam, and we've been homies ever since you uh, did the podcast. But we haven't got to catch up that much. We always tried to catch up when you were in the Goldie, which just wasn't that often because you're a fucking superstar uh, Bellator fighter, um, but now based in, in the Goldie again for a bit. So yeah. we're doing it. Back again. And it was always good because um, whenever you came to Sydney, you're always in Concord. Yeah. We're out here living our best life in Concord at Manush. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, if you know, you know, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> From the, the area. MA no. fight, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> MA fight store. And like, yeah, no, it's been sick, man. I'm so stoked to be back and catch up on life from both ends i'd love to hear like your side and and then obviously fill you in of what i've been up to too but it's funny how my journey's brought me back to the gold coast yeah yeah well i feel like it was always kind of home for you in a, in a yeah. roundabout sense right yeah definitely i mean this is like i always kind of say to everyone like gold coast is my favorite Aussie place home, in yeah. the world yeah kind of thing like no matter where i go or the places i get to travel or whatever like nothing beats gc like and i think anyone that's from here kind of knows people yeah. that visit maybe haven't quite touched the surface on what it can offer but yeah gc is always like more beautiful than anywhere else i've been so. yeah I, honestly i agree and like i call it goldywood you know because yeah. like uh, living in in hollywood for a while like to me the gold coast is the closest that you get to like that hollywood sunset kind of vibe Especially you got like all the influences and the beach and like, I don't know, it just, it Similar. just yeah. gets a bit of a vibe going. And I'm always like, I actually did a thing with Gold Coast Bulletin the other day and I was just like mad hyping up the Gold Coast because I think it's, there's like a weird stereotype of the Gold Coast, but I just don't see it. Like I'm yeah. literally not around, I live 400 meters from the beach in Berlin. I just miss <sighs> that entire scene, you know? Yeah. So I just feel like the Goldie really has a lot to offer. And dude, we saw it through COVID. There was like 10,000 yeah. people a week moving here. Oh my God. Yeah. And I mean, you can tell the only negative now is obviously the real estate and everything, but mm. you can definitely tell like everyone in Sydney and like from living in Sydney for the last few years, like how juxtaposed it is yeah. um, in the, the demographic and like, yeah, there is obviously there's a negative demographic everywhere you go. Like there's a yeah. neg negative demographic in Hollywood, you know, um, it'd be just taking your stride and take whatever the surrounding and the environment is for what it is. And I think the Gold yeah. Coast is like, once you really dive into it, you're like, oh shit, this place has like there's a lot of yeah. anything and everything you could want, kind of thing. And it's it's great for families. It's a little bit um, slower paced if you're into that, and you know, it gives a lot of opportunity, but in a different way. Yeah, and I think anyone that always like complains about the scene or like the goal, they're in it. Yeah, you know, <laughs> so it's like if you're not in it, it's like pretty hard to complain about it, right? Yeah. And you can remove yourself from it from the most part. Like, Easy. Just go to the beach. Just go go to the gym. Dive go train. The, yeah, dive in the surf and then go straight from the beach to the gym. And then go straight back from the gym to the beach and then go get coffee. Like, you're going to be all right. You can't like, fuck it up. <laughs> you can't really. It's pretty pretty straightforward kind of vibe. But yeah, I love uh, the Gold Coast. Is uh, your mum's doing good? Yeah, yeah, she's great. She's um, around the corner from here, of course, because yeah. it's the Gold Coast and everything's five minutes everything's away. Everything's around the corner. How could you, how could you struggle? Like, like you're saying, so we're here. My gym's five minutes from there. She's across the road from, like, on the other side of Reedy Creek. Oh, sick. So she, that's where her work is. So I get to, like, meet her for breakfast or lunch or whatever, like, in the middle of my day in, in between training sessions and then i can go to the beach or whatever so yeah life's, life's good. good yeah it's really good <laughs> so where are you at fight wise have you got something coming up soon because you had your eye injury so you were kind of on a bit of a run uh the run got stopped with a gnarly up kick <laughs> which is a, a bit of a shit luck uh and then was it straight after that that you had the eye thing go on like is, is the timeline kind of right kind of yeah pretty much i mean like yeah i was going well um had a big fight lined up um kind of post covid too that i had lined up before covid hit yeah um we were meant to fight in london and then uh yeah and then that ended up falling through like i kind of knew it was going to fall through even when it got Why like, announced that? um because it was like right at the start of oh, 2020 yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it was yeah. like i think it got announced I, I would assume maybe like february march like oh and you when did, you kind of like, like yeah, oh, you could feel the vibe yeah like gnarly soon so um we're still training obviously as much as we could and then once everything started to shut down and i was in sydney so obviously the lockdowns were a little bit more extreme than what they were here um then we yeah kind of just took a break 
finally got back into it. First fight back was a dub. Um, that was awesome and a really good performance, I think, by me after having like a little layoff. And then um, finally relined up this good fight again um, with someone that kind of had like a bit of a following and a bit of a trajectory of her own. And then, um, yeah, go, momentum going my way, get up kicked, fall into a triangle, don't know what's happening, wake up in the triangle, kind of like. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that like, sucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is shit. Um, and even like it's funny because she fought on the weekend and I always wonder like if she like thought that that's what happened or like you know yeah I, I don't, you never know what they think like happened because uh, i think i kind of hid that i was rocked from the up kick pretty well yeah. and she was like oh i'm she was like i was really surprised that she tapped because it wasn't really on that well but she's like i think she was a bit rocked and blah 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 and i was like yeah that's like that's an accurate like yeah. assessment of like the performance and that's kind of what happened so it's kind of just interesting how that went but um because she, she's kind of doing pretty good in in the like bellator <laughs> sort of um deal right yeah like i mean um she went uh from i might get this wrong but um she went like four and oh in her first four fights with bellator yeah um and obviously being from ireland she's welsh i'm pretty sure but um she lives in ireland and um has done for a while so she goes to sbg which is obviously a great yeah. name and yeah. and uh what is it with you and fighting sbg people? i know right yeah. <laughs> and then like <laughs> but that's got a picture like of you beef, on the wall like, like in the but, chick yeah. fucking in, in the dressing room <laughs> i got told that one i can't remember who it was someone yeah someone said that but um and then like I'm kind of friends with Coach Kavanagh as well because of like um, sometimes I'll pass a line on the altar and like um, the Winter Warrior kind of yeah, stuff as well. Yeah, and that's yeah. always been cool. So it's funny. I think like, you know, it's all respect. It's just a fight Nothing game. Respect. Yeah. But yeah, but at the same time, like, yeah, SVG, I like see them again. I'm like, yeah, I have to win this. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> there's yeah. like more on the line kind yeah. of thing. Um, but it's sick because it's like obviously they bring such a big name and the, they draw such a great crowd from the Irish like fan yeah, base, yeah. which as we know is crazy, um, to Bellator. And like obviously Connor did a lot of his stuff in the UFC, but having that connection with the SBG guys and having so many of those guys, um, oh, I always forget his name, Stravolima or whatever it is, um, and a couple of the other like stars from that gym yeah. um, coming over to Bellator and doing really well. That's always like really positive for us. And then obviously I get to fight him. So that's kind of yeah. secondhand as well. Um, and she had that momentum. She was doing a little bit of the broadcasting and stuff as well, especially yeah. in like, yeah. the European, UK kind of area because they do have like random shows in um, like Paris and like, I don't know, just like, mm. um, Rome and, and all sorts of stuff like that. So um, once they've kind of hit that European demographic, then I think they like to use people from over there, which is always really good. Yeah. So yeah, so I guess she had like a good momentum with that and and then just um, having, I guess, her country in that kind of area of the world get behind her was kind of positive for me because I knew skill-wise I could beat her. And um, when it first got matched up, I was really excited and then it fell through. And then when it got matched up again, I was kind of in like, I think the best shape of my life, like definitely that fight. I always sort of think like that was my best camp and my best shape. Yeah. I had a few things go wrong still as usual, but um, it was still like coming into fight week and everything was really good. And she didn't make weight. And so that was just like a little edge for me in a sense. Like it wasn't like, a, oh, she didn't make weight. She's going to be heavy. Like we're all going to be heavy. Like, <laughs> yeah, everyone's like getting... a couple of kilos isn't going to make a difference. Like, yeah. And it just, in my mind, when people don't make weight, it's like, oh, that's like a head fuck for you. Cause you're yeah. going to have like this head noise going in. It was her first fight. I believe in America because um, all of all of our other fights had been in either like the UK or like somewhere over there like so coming from all the way from Ireland like you would know to like that's a long way to get to yeah, America yeah. like it's a long haul flight it's a lot of like time difference and adjusting and all these things I think maybe like that all played a factor so everything was definitely in my like a favor but it just didn't work out and I uh, there must be a reason for it and I'm still kind of like navigating that but then I um probably sets up a cool rematch though yeah and and I mean she did just win her last fight against the girl that I just lost to and then the fight before that she lost to a girl that I beat so yeah, it's like this okay. weird triangle and yeah. stuff as well so um I think that makes for um maybe she might line up with another girl first um so like she gets a win you get a win or a loss because yeah. I'm coming off a loss because she um, there's another lady, Arlene Blanco from Australia, who um, we love and um, represents us so well. She's been sitting at the one and two. She should be one. She should be um, the number one contender. But um, Kent Zingano is the number one contender. So she's now two. But she's been sitting there yeah, for yeah. what I'm assuming is like four years, five years, yeah, whatever. Right. So like been sitting there for a long time. So What's her name? Arlene Blanco. Pull, pull her up. Group. She just recently, A-R-L-E-N-E. 
and th- it should be the Aussie girl. Just recently for uh, Chris Cyborg and Hawaii. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, Dude, that would have been sick. I've been a little bit out Chris of the uh, out of the MMA world yeah. recently, so that's right. so I'm actually excited. We'll bring you back. Yeah, in. I'm excited <laughs> to talk just to like just to catch me back up. Yeah, it, yeah. I've watched like the big UFC cards, but yeah, I just haven't been out of there. Like normally, I'm trying to watch like a lot of stuff. It's hard. Fuck, it gets hard. There's so many motocross races and like Formula One and MotoGP. Like, there's a lot going on at the moment. So. And then there's so many combat sports, like like boxing, ADCC. ADCC oh was. Oh, we should go oh deep into God. that. We're gonna too. go deep in that. What was it? B L. Um, B L E N C O W E. Yeah, blank out. Oh, there you go. That's Bang. Yeah. yeah, let's give her some love. Go to she... like images or like uh, Insta. Um, yeah, every a uh, topology is quite good. Yeah, ex um world champion boxer. Um, she looks like a beast. Transition absolute beast. Like one of the hardest workers I know. That's sick. absolute beast. Um, mother of two. That looks like a war. Click yeah, into that one. That Bell was the first fight. I'm oh, so sure. they fought. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so they fought twice. Once in, I'm trying to get this timeline right, but about I'd say 2020 or 2021. Yeah, and then again. Um, no, it'd be 2020. Or maybe, I don't know. Man, if you go the distance with Cyborg, beast. The last fight they had, I was blessed enough to be on that same card in really? Hawaii. And we're out here in the middle of Hawaii. And you know, like what those guys are like, the brothers yeah, are going yeah. crazy. And these guys put on an absolute phenomenal fight. Like a war, but a phenomenal fight. Chris Cyborg's ticket is just like second to none. But Arlene like had this... There's grit in her I haven't seen in a little while. And I think she would say the same, like if she she had been asked the question. Um, and I, I did kind of speak to her before and after, but she um she was like, I just wanted it like yeah, really yeah, badly. Yeah. And like you it, it, sometimes it's hard to express that, but she expressed that like like she never took a backward step kind of thing. She yeah, she always yeah. like pushed forward, even when she got I think knocked down maybe in like the third round or something like that. Um, she just came back and literally like, it was like she didn't get knocked down she just like bit down on her mouth guard and just came it was just such a great fight it was an yeah. inspiring fight it was one of those yeah. fights that you're watching and you're just like I want even like the winner or loser it doesn't matter who's winning or yeah. losing right yeah. now just I want to be these guys I want to have that motivation and that integrity and like yeah like that kind of push and um, it was just phenomenal especially cause, because she has fought for the title I think three times maybe yeah. i might be wrong um so that was for the title yeah yeah, yeah. and so narrowly missing a few times and I, I think she knew that this was kind of one of her last hits for the title because then it's always hard to run it back around like yeah, you lose yeah. like the rob whittakers and all that sort of stuff yeah um you lose for the title but then you've got to you know go back Work to your way back. contenders and, and then they're throwing just like killers at you as well yeah. you know so you've got to like <clears throat> walk through these killers that are already in line for the yeah. title as well and she's too good for the killers but like just, just that missing tiny the, step yeah. On, yeah yeah and so it's just like that really hard thing but you could see that in the fight it was almost like she represented that st- storyline or yeah, if, it, yeah. if you would in that fight so that was like definitely a must watch for anyone who's listening um to go back to the chris cyborg arlene blanco too in hawaii um yeah. which was at like may april may or whatever could so you feel that like energy that. in hawaii too because like oh. it's a fucking gnarly place man like if you've ever been in the trenches in hawaii like not staying at waikiki but like if you've ever stayed anywhere outside of it no joke yeah like i'm very lucky that i've spent a lot of time in san diego and so i've been like pretty much surrounded by hawaiians for like the last year or so yeah and so like it was just fitting for me to come back and like fight in hawaii um after my first eye surgery and i was just like this is amazing I literally landed and yeah, we, ha- we, we stayed in Waikiki cause like obviously What's um, easy? we're at the Blaisdell yeah. as well. So like you're kind of right in the center um, of downtown and then um, just like from the, from landing, I was just like the aloha is like aloha. Yeah. Thing, yeah <laughs> like yeah. I was yeah. like, oh, I get it now. And like me and my friend James, um, you might know Jimmy. From yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so Shout I took to him Jimmy. over. Fucking Shout out to Jimmy and Jimmy G. Jitsu. Top G. One of my favorite people in the world. Yeah, Best yeah. person to take over to Hawaii with me. Also from New Zealand. So we're like, you know, we're like Polynesian. We're out here yeah. like we'll fit in. And um, I kept calling him a Howley because he's white, but he's like probably more Maori than me. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it's hilarious. So we're just enjoying like just learning the culture and understanding it. Like I knew a little bit, obviously by being around a lot of Hawaiians, but it's not nothing like when you're over there, like the, what we call mana. And I'm pretty sure they use that same word in Hawaiian yeah, language yeah. as well. Like it's just so 
prominent there yeah. and it was awesome and like even like coming off a loss walking outside the cage i was like no nah, i gotta do my chi hu like i gotta chi hu to these guys like that's what they're here for and i chi hu and like i'm getting like pulled away by like because they want to like rush you out and um, yeah yeah all that sort of stuff get the next people on and the crowd went ballistic and i was like this is amazing i was like <laughs> shout out to the poly like bros and sisters that were in like all the aunties that were in the yeah. crowd and everyone that was just like vibing like it, like that'll be definitely one of my top memories of of my fighting career for sure just fighting in hawaii and being like so lucky to like be accepted and be polynesian and yeah. all these things i was just like, do you have any like say in that like going forward like you can say to the bellator guys like hey fuck put me back in like any hawaiian card like i want to be on that card yeah i've definitely like made that known a lot and then just sometimes it just doesn't work out like yeah obviously everyone wants to go on a hawaii card too so True. it's like <laughs> yeah. can we can we go fight and have a holiday in hawaii and then they we have like with bellator especially a lot of hawaiian fighters as well because yeah right. um and i think that's like uh definitely scott coca but more rich chow um are definitely a big like supporter and fan of um polynesian kind of mma which is really really cool i think that's one of the reasons that i'm with bellator as well yeah um someone like that and then um you look at like a Lim Lay mcfarlane and um now we've got yancy Mirdos and um bobby green and like a few other just like hammers um yeah. if i could say um from hawaii and so the following over there is just crazy and like fighting is crazy over there yeah, like yeah. everyone loves a scrap and like <laughs> even like sitting because we had a, a card on friday and a card on saturday okay so i weighed in on friday and then we were like oh we gotta go you know like we gotta go watch it was uh liz karmush versus um the last champion um who is really really good but anyway they fought for the flyweight title yeah and um and yeah it was just like being in the crowd and i literally sat like in in the crowd it kind of went towards the back a little bit because mm. i just wanted to like duck in and duck like get it <laughs> yeah yeah because yeah. i was like i just cut weight and i could wait in i'm trying to like snack i have like all these snacks there sitting out the fights <laughs> like but it's really cool and then um yeah just like listening to everyone in the crowd being like one two like <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Daughter, two three and you're like nah bro that's not right but okay like yeah. <laughs> i really love yeah. the enthusiasm <laughs> but it's just about yeah the fact that they're like invested like yeah. in anyone too like which is really, really cool and i was just like that's like a different crowd to the australian crowd different crowd to new zealand crowd and american crowd like from like the mainland crowd that i've experienced which is really really cool yeah we i got to spend we, we did like a video project there i yeah. like built a track on Kauai, and then we like flew these dudes over like i had to, I had to live there for pretty much six weeks Must be nice. so it was it was it actually it was pretty <clears throat> gnarly like because yeah. I, I got fairly cool. local you know yeah. and it was like there was a lot of politics going on like people wanted didn't want this here and they wanted Rally. everyone wanted yeah yeah everyone wanted like a piece of the pie for like us being there so i got like a real education in like legitimate hawaiian culture yeah and it's fucking no joke like there's some good there's some bad and there's like you know i kind of got a real sense of i guess that place and the people and how proud they are of like their land and it yeah. was uh but in that that being said lifelong friends coming Absolutely. out of that trip it was crazy and it's like just like for anyone listening like when you if you go to hawaii go to waikiki go to Honolulu, enjoy it for sure but just be very mindful of the respecting the the place respecting the people and respecting the culture because like, they have respect for themselves yes and they're very staunch on their beliefs just yeah, like yeah, the rest of us yeah. polynesians they're very staunch on um the the if spots and maybes and like just like you know just basic stuff like uh, take reusable water bottles and mm. um, try not to pollute the the land like uh try try shop local try eat local like waikiki and honolulu are are great and they're obviously very easy to navigate um but go to like if you're on oahu go to haleiva go yeah. go up north shore like yeah. um but ask and um and don't take anything from from the beaches and with you like don't like remove that ask and um for approval to go to like some of the uh kind of private beaches yeah um get, try get a local to take you around you know and then that will definitely help you um respect yeah just respect yeah. the place i feel like it's all common sense stuff but even me when i was over there knowing all of this and having all this and like living like when i'm in san diego i stay with alima lee mcfarlane who's like the staunchest little flyweight i've ever met in my <laughs> life and um ex flyweight bellator champion um from oahu as well but just very um conservative and just understanding of all of the hawaiian culture and everything like that she she doesn't just like 
talk it online and yeah, tell yeah, people yeah, to yeah, you know yeah. do this and that. She literally she threw a luau, which is like a big you know yeah. barbecue kind of celebration thing or whatever. And to a T, we had recycling bins, we had water bottles that were in the Jason Momoa water bottles that are like stainless steel. Yeah. Um, all of the cutlery and like um, paper and stuff was all paper and um, wood and recyclable. Um, you know, everything to a T was thought about and was respected and done in the most, um, like, I guess. Like sustainable. Yeah, yeah, yeah sustainable yeah. way that was going to help, like, yeah, the place. And um, for that, and then obviously just she just supported local. She had local vendors. She had local, like, we had like a monster truck, like a monster kind of um, tent. And then, um, then just some other local vendors and some people that were representing the culture. And then we had obviously Hawaiian and Polynesian music um, from some local artists, but some of the, like the best artists in Hawaii, like Ellie Mack and some of the other people. I was like, you know, like this is not a low level luau. Like yeah, this was yeah, crazy, yeah, yeah. but um, still to a T, everything was just like phenomenal and immaculate. And she practiced what she preaches. And I think if you're ever like concerned about um the right or wrong thing to do so that would definitely be a resource i would use to like reference because she's always going on about you know keeping hawaiian hands and hawaiian um hawaiian lands and hawaiian hands and that's just like i feel like that's everywhere now is especially yeah, but to, like <clears throat> really come around just across the board huh yeah and uh, but it's like when you look at a place like that which is just a bunch of islands off the mainland like they're really limited in being able to um, integrate into the mainland like that's their next choice if they get pushed out of their own land and they can't afford it and it's way way past the median income yeah over yeah, there, yeah a house and whatever um so you're pushing out locals to the mainland that's a big huge uh, culture jump well, they're basically moving countries yeah and so it's like that's affecting so much more than just like like Waikiki and all these things yeah. it's it's affecting that culture and it's affecting the lineage that they're gonna try continue on so it's just like I get that maybe like people had good intentions buying land over there or having a holiday home or um, some investors or whatever it was like I'm not saying people are malicious in their intent yeah but now that we understand how negatively like it's impacting yeah, yeah. yeah like some of my friends live over there and pay ridiculous amounts in rent and all that sort of stuff and they're like born and raised there and yeah. i'm just like that doesn't you know make sense and um i guess everywhere's definitely dealing with inflation but when you think hawaii's gonna be like i'd say like 20 30 percent more expensive than sydney yeah <laughs> which doesn't make sense like in even in the local areas like full local and like these guys don't even have like street lights in some areas yeah. and it's yeah. like dirt roads and still the inflation is like alive and well over there so just it's like crazy to sure see when you like really go out into the hills like it's still very underdeveloped and like yeah. but in a good way like in people like they don't want it yeah like they're living good they're, but yeah there's not crazy traffic lights it's like a lot of dirt roads but yeah it's like uh, i think hawaii is a lot different than what most people would would actually think yeah and it, yeah and it's so beautiful for that reason oh that's crazy and so that's why they're trying to you know keep that and i think like it's just respecting that's good but it's so f i was just like I was like, I love the Gold Coast. Don't get me wrong, like I just said, but I was like, I mean, this is pretty close. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I could live here for the rest of my life. Absolutely. Like, say less. So, like, some of those beaches, oh my God. Yeah. And the waves are heavy. <laughs> like, it's a totally different ocean, eh? Like, yeah. I, I started surfing People in California surfing. pretty much. Mm. And, um, and, I was like, yeah, I've been surfing like a year. And when I'd spent this month in Hawaii, I was like, I'm keen to go surf over there. Like a two foot wave in Hawaii felt like a seven foot wave in California. I was, could not fucking believe it. Almost drowned the first time I tried to go out. Didn't even make it out the back. I <laughs> just got no. sent back in. There were a bunch of local dudes laughing at me. I was like, yeah, fair. I deserve it. <laughs> yeah, I earned that. But oh, I'm, all my friends are always like trying to um, say that they're going to teach me how to surf. Like all my Hawaiian friends. And then when we got to Hawaii, I was like, I'm not learning here. Like yeah. this is crazy. Like Waikiki <laughs> is perfect. Though. Yeah. I that. had one of the best days of my life in surfing in Waikiki. We just rented boards. The waves were like three foot and just perfect coming in off the bay and then there were like these yachts that were kind of out the back and then there was just like people partying on these on these uh like yeah. sailboats and yachts and stuff so we'd like paddle over get a mai tai have a drink it's catch mad. some waves yeah it's it's a fucking vibe yeah and there's a lot of aloha for that so yeah because like that's the cool thing about obviously it's beautiful but then you got that culture of it and that culture is really warm welcoming yeah and yeah obviously they're staunch in their beliefs like we're saying but they're still really warm and now like, like they want to educate you like i went into like the you know that um honolulu cookie 
um, you would have seen it. Like, it's everywhere. Like it's everywhere in Haiki, uh, Waikiki and Honolulu. Um, it's like just a cookie place. Like no, they're just I like short oh, cookies. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Like yeah. the little rectangular. Yeah, with yeah, the pine- yeah, They look yeah, like yeah. pineapples or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was just mucking around and we were, li- um, we were staying in for the first week Bellator put us in um, the Hilton like resort yep. and so there's like shops and stuff in there and I'm just like fucking around I can't eat anything can't really yeah, like, yeah, I've yeah. done enough training for the day so just walking around trying to keep my mind um, thing and I walk into that cookie place and um, I don't even uh, the lady was must, must have just been like oh where are you from what, what are you here for kind of general touristy talk and I was like, you oh. can pass this Hawaiian too yeah. when you're just there, yeah. yeah. Which is cool. And yeah. when I was hanging out with all my Hawaiian friends, yeah, I was like yeah. trying to get my pigeon on, and it wasn't really working. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, oh, I could do this. <laughs> and then like most people just thought I was Hawaiian, and then yeah. I'd speak, and they'd be like, oh wait, what? Where are you from? <laughs> yeah. And it was cool because that would, like would spark up a convo. And then she was like, I was like, oh, the, I'm with the Bellator crew. Like, there's fights on this weekend. And it's funny, like even these like what i would say civilian kind of people that are kind of a little bit more square straight edge i still like what there's fights on i didn't know there was fights on because they're such mad fight yeah, fans they're yeah, just like yeah. oh we want to go to the scraps like what are you talking about like and you're like yes yeah, sweet um so that kind of ends up being like a really good conversation whereas i think sometimes in like say australia or even like america and stuff like that if you have a conversation about mma they're like oh, like, oh yeah oh, that's, yeah, that's nice but like you know why are you doing that like that's yeah ridiculous yeah, kind of yeah, thing. Like, yeah yeah so it's like a bit of a different kind of yeah vibe about it whereas like in hawaii everyone was just like oh we didn't even know those fights on like like Everyone can we get tickets yeah can we go how do we watch kind of thing who's on whatever and then like once you say it's like a like a local boy that's on they're just like oh we know him like yeah kai and all these other guys that were from like the area so that was really cool um but anyway she was just like i got like two cookies or whatever and it was like two for six dollars and she just jammed like 10 more in i was like I'm pretty sure that's like four times the amount of what I just paid. But thank you so much. She was like, have more. And sis, if you need more, just come back. Like, and I was what like, I was like, this is like that, you know, aloha that they talk yeah. about. And yeah. it's just because like, yeah, because I'm a fighter, because they like love it and they want to like support in some sort of way, even if it was with cookies or whatever. Like, I'm just like, it was that everywhere. Like every cafe that you went into, you'd ask a question, they'd give you a whole paragraph info about it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that'd make sure you, they're like, do you want us to like book it or like get you there or walk you? down that you know like i was like this is like amazing this is that polynesian that is like a that is like a poly spirit for sure yeah which we love and that just made me like enjoy it even more (laughs) yeah dude i want to go back there eh? we're gonna we'll do a trip yeah i want to uh my you know jack freestone surfer he's he's on Kauai, so i've been like trying to yeah he's he's uh he's married to alana blanchard so she's oh, like the yeah. yeah the surfer chick yeah. so like they're over in Kauai. Nice. There's like heaps of jiu-jitsu there too. Yes, yeah, so like there's so heaps of MMA. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like just in general like yeah. um and then I went to Maui for a day and uh literally a day. I've never been to Maui. Oh, Is highly it recommend. Sick? Yeah. yeah. It's like um probably I might get this wrong, but what I think is like the second most built up after Oahu. I think it is. Yeah. 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 So it's like, it's still, but it's still local. It's a, like a much way. It's way more, different. Less like, vibe than yeah, like, Kauai is the same. Like yeah. it's, it's still developed and it's still like yeah. a, it's like a Gold Coast kind of vibe, but just not, not the high rise. It's not as touristy sort of deal. And it's not like Hilo, which is like, like big island will be like even more dirt roady kind of yeah, local yeah, local yeah. local like to get from one place to another it's like local local but whereas maui's kind of like a good little good mix like definitely way more relaxed but still um i would compare it almost to like a little barley in a sense like where yeah, you're just yeah. kind of like i can go to the beach and go get drinks or whatever and then like um like go to like a cafe or whatever and like the girls um my two mates um from over there i stayed with um, one of my friends' families, um, which made it even better because I just felt like I was experiencing a little bit like more. Like a bit more like authentic version. Yeah. And like her mom's um, Samoan and like not like she's like first generation Samoan. So she's like what I know from my Samoan friends. Like I'm just like, oh, this makes it feel like home almost. Yeah. Because like obviously in Australia and New Zealand, we have a lot of Samoans. And then um, and she, so she's half Samoan and half um, Hawaiian 
uh, but no, she's actually just half. I'm pretty sure she's half American because her dad's actually from the East Coast. Oh, really? He's from like Connecticut or something like Massachusetts or Connecticut, somewhere yeah, like that. Because right. I remember when I heard it, I was like, He's wait, what? East. I was like, yeah. you're a Howley, like yeah. proper, like <laughs> yeah. that's hilarious. And so um, it was just good staying with her, enjoying her family. Her family was just absolutely amazing, like treating me like I was like some, I don't know, superstar or whatever. And I was like, this is amazing. I was like, auntie, please just like don't fuss about me because it's it's giving me anxiety. I yeah, need to yeah, be yeah. fussing about you. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I need to be helping you, but they were amazing. And then um, showed me around and I just got to see like all the local spots and all the little things. And then my other friend is from Hilo, but um, she lived in Maui for a long time. So she was like, this is my one of my gyms. This is the other gym. We literally just went like gym hopping. And then That's we went sick. to like someone's garage and did pad work in the garage. And then like, I was like, this is the stuff that takes me back to like, you know, OG days of um, being on the local scene and, you know. That's kind of would be one of the cool things about being a professional fighter is like there's those blocks where you have to do your camp and it's like super structured and it's just like regimented and you're just there to fucking grind and that's like where the money's getting made and then it's like for i know for you like you're a person that just loves training you're not like a camp and then chill camp and then chill but to be out of then kind of like cruise around and just get different influences like that to me is where like the art of being a fighter would come in is like traveling experiencing these new places like hitting pads in a hawaiian you know backyard like that would be the dopest part of kind of your job in a sense yeah and i think it's like anyone that has a sport or a skill or whatever you can when you travel you get to explore that yeah. individual skill like yeah. in so many different avenues and you can share that that's your language like yeah. no matter where you are you know what culture you're in like if you're in it asia or whatever yeah. yeah you're just like let's punch on oh yep see like <laughs> <laughs> roger yeah. and we'll go and like and so it's like it's definitely something that i've been always very like um consciously grateful of to be able to do something like that and have that language wherever i go in the world so i get to share it with other people i get to like you know conversate about the ufc that was on the weekend or yeah, i get yeah. to sit down and um and roll with these guys or spar with these people or hip pads or whatever like Oh, that's something that I'll always be grateful for and something that nobody can kind of take away from you in yeah, a sense. Yeah. If I have zero dollars in my account, I can still sit with someone and talk about martial arts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it doesn't matter like where you're at in life. It's just something that you've kind of built and it comes from years of experience and years of, um, you know, putting the work in to be able to then travel to then be able to use that work that and experience um, yeah. in other experiences. So it's just like kind of like stems off each other. Yeah. And I love the, it's one of the things I just love about like jujitsu in general, but I think it translates to all martial arts is like you can have not $1 in your bank account, but be dope as fuck at jujitsu <laughs> and people are going to, you're going to be respected. You're going to have a, like a place to go you can have a way that you can make money you know you can coach you could you know there's like yeah. there's so many like just like having that skill it's something that it's literally no one could take that away from you like especially i think about being a black belt in jiu-jitsu you know yeah. like i even I, I tell like some younger dudes in the gym that it's like just fucking do jiu-jitsu bro like yeah. you to lose, do an so. apprentice you know an apprenticeship you get a black belt by the time you're like 24 25 like you've done your apprenticeship now yeah. you have this trade like you literally have a trade that no one can take off you You can go to any gym in the world and go hey i'm a black belt i want to help teach them classes or yeah. hey i'm a black belt like i want to do even you take the kids classes like start at the very low level yep. whatever yep. you can even if you're a blue belt and you take the kids classes because you're good with people or whatever it is and do a couple of privates with some of the like free trial guys or whatever it is like it's it's a skill that and it, it was like a little bit more niche a while ago. Obviously, it's getting more popular, but it's still pretty niche and it's still growing. I mean, There's like we saw many. ADCC, so we, it's still growing in avenues where you can make money. Like there was a while, like a very, like a five year period probably when you wouldn't have done jujitsu as a career. Like that's yeah. definitely um, like wasn't going to be monetized in a way. It would be like going to the Olympics kind of thing. Like yeah, for true. For a lot huh? of those guys, yeah. like it's a great feat for sure. And you get to achieve a lot of things and travel or whatever, but you probably weren't going to like make the big, big bang. Um, but now like now it's a different story. You can sell instructionals. You can yeah. like own a gym. You can just teach it another gym. You can affiliate with other gyms. You can do fight to wins. You can do invitationals. You can do high rollers. You can do ADCC, you can yeah. do whatever. Like, and like, and you can win worlds or whatever. And like, all these things are um, stuff that I think weren't available to people a while ago. And then also like now a bit of a niche avenue to do. And, um, and if you're good at it, then I just think I, this is a conversation actually I was having last night with um, one of my friends who's in the music industry. And it's just 
whatever you love, try think of different ways you can make revenue off that. Definitely. And it's just like, that's, and he was like, oh, you're very aware of that. And I was like, well, I gave up everything to do this. So mm. I need to figure out how to make money because I don't have any like fallback. Like, yeah, you don't have someone bankrolling this shit. Nah, year. I don't have like two parents like that are sitting pretty or whatever. I have one parent and she's doing all right, but I'm I'm doing it for her so that she does better. So that yeah. she, I'm doing it so that she can quit her job. I'm not yeah. doing it so that she can look after me if I fail kind of thing. And I'm making sure that that happens. So it's just like once you kind of have that mindset and if you love something enough, you're going to figure out a way to make money out of it. Like there's like, I guarantee that no matter how you think, no matter what it is, like even if it's like welding, or even if it's like i don't know something like very niche something very small something very minimal just be the best at it and find a way to make revenue out of it and then you'll never have to work a day in your life kind of cliche saying but it's so true and then so when you're looking at career paths like ours you've got to think like fighting's great but obviously you get injuries you you have covid or there's all sorts of other factors that are gonna stop me from doing the actual fight i can still train i can still do my social media i can still you know do little bits and pieces that are gonna somehow benefit my brand my network and then my become like a net positive yeah 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 it's obviously something that you've created too yeah like i think about that all the time i mean even you know like so we just went to Cape York. We just did three weeks of that. And it's like the boys come and we filmed it. It's like, uh, would I rather just do that without cameras and without charging batteries and without dumping cards and without... But it's like, yeah, I would. But I can't afford to do that right now. So, <laughs> hey, the fuck come along. We'll make something out of it. You yeah. know, like let's put out a video, make whatever we can off of it. And it's documenting memories. I'm all about being present. But then like when things happen or you lose a phone or people pass away or whatever i look for real, back for real and i'm like i'm glad i was on my phone you know like yeah. i'm not I, like i was in the moment i was in the moment absolutely because i always am and anyone that's been around me knows that i like i have a good energy about me and that kind of thing so i don't i don't struggle with that integrity in myself yeah. i guess so i'm like if i'm on my phone it's because i want to remember this and because i'm not always in this country or i'm not always in this city or i'm not in the, always in this place and so when i I'm old and gray or whatever. I can look back on all these memories and I've, if they're on Instagram and posted, then they're there forever kind of thing. So if I lose that phone or somehow my shit gets hacked or whatever, I don't know, um, then it's still kind of there. There's still versions of it in different places and that kind of thing. And like that kind of happened to me recently. I was like, I'm glad I took all these videos. I'm glad I did all this stuff. And like, and as much as you make money off what you're doing, but you're also making these memories that these guys will be able to like, you don't realize it's that cliche thing. You don't realize that they're the best years of your life until after kind of thing. And like, these are the best years of our lives. These are moments that we're probably not going to be able to replicate. Yeah, we'll be able to keep doing cool other stuff, but it's going to be a different vibe. It's going to be a different journey when we're older and we're in, at different stages of our life. We have kids, we have whatever it is. So, th- like, enjoy it. Enjoy yeah. it. Document it. Remember it. And re- and if you can remember it in a crazy aesthetic way, that's even better. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I think, too, th- this year was, like, my dad probably won't ever be able to do it again. Like, his bo- he's 60, his body's fucking up. And that's probably the last time that he's riding to the top. And then we had like a full crew filming the whole thing. And it's like, I'll always have that. And like my dad will actually always have that. Like once that video is made, he's always going to be able to watch himself ride to the tip. And there's going to be, you know, like 30 years of his life where like physically he won't be able to do a lot of the things that he used to be able to do. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about it like, man, maybe this will be rad for him to just sit back and watch. Like in those years, you know, he's like 80. Yeah. And he's like, bang, put that on. It's like, fuck, that was such a good trip. Like you actually remember, you know, like you get those feelings and yeah. like you really refill the vibe of, of like what you did. But it's like, I think it's just that the, to speak to your point before, it's like, I'll just figure out a way to like live the life I want to live and I'll just work around it. Yeah. And I think that I've always kind of done that, you know, like yeah. I've always thought about how do I like do the things that I want to do and then just make a little bit of cash off the side of it. And mm-hmm. and I was a guy that like I've had a ton of different jobs and not jobs like businesses that I've started and like this is the one that really worked for me in, in a sense. And it's like, you know, that all those people, if I listen to all those people all those years, like, dude, you just need to get a job. Like maybe you just need to get some solid income or it's like, well, then I wouldn't have done this. So, you know, like be a fuck up for 10 years. If, yeah. that's, if that's what it takes, like cruise around, really find your, 
fail plain, often. you know what I mean? Yeah, fucking oath. Fail as much as you can. Like, then that is like something that you hear, I guess, when you're coming up and you don't really understand it until you understand mm. it, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just like, oh, now I'm on my 10th fail. I get what you mean. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm better for it. And yep. I'm like, it's pushing me into that next direction. And this is where I was meant to go. Everything happens for a reason. All those cliche things, they end up, you end up realizing them and they They're make sense. They're cliche for a reason. Yeah, when, uh, when you're surrounding yourself with people that are positive and that have done that pathway too. Like have the dream first, fail a bunch of times and yeah. then it'll work itself out. Like like you just said. What's, one of the, what's something that's happened to you recently where like, so I, I've had a few things recently where it's like you look at it objectively like right in the moment, you're like, fuck, that's bad. But then I've been able to just be like, nah, this all good. Yeah. So this this has a long tail, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure this has a way of working out in the end. Like, have you got any of those recently where you like stopped yourself from being bummed because you knew yes. at some point it would pay you back? I, I think like, I mean, uh, this happens to me a lot, but like the way I learned that, I think I'm going to use this as an example. The way I learned that was from fighting, like, and losing like mm. losing and fighting feels like the end of the world like you've just done like eight weeks and you've traveled and you've cut weight and you've done all the stuff and that last fight um going back to the timeline basically i lost that fight last year i got stuck in a lockdown i went to san diego so that i could at least train and then i got an eye surgery and then i went back to the fighting um and then i got another eye surgery after the last fight so it was it was pretty crazy because i had literally i got the eye surgery in december at christmas um like two days before christmas and then um they told me to have like a month off obviously and then um i pretty much after like i think two or three weeks of training went into camp so from having like a long time off and getting off a of surgery and all those repercussions that happens with that um i went straight into camp so i shocked my body it was rough it was really rough it was a really rough camp i didn't enjoy it one minute of it uh, i tried to so much i'm always trying to be that person that's trying to bring the positive yeah but, yeah um it was a i had a lot of weight to cut and um so that really takes the fun out of it um, I was kind of banging everything together last minute and I, I had just moved back to the Gold Coast because of the eye surgeries. And so I'd put a lot of pressure on the gym kind of to, you know, give me what I needed and the resources that I needed to um, be where I was when I'd only been back for like a month or two. Um, but, you know, I found the right gyms. I found the right people. And I, I'm always very lucky that I'm from here and that kind of thing. But um, and then I fought cut maybe like in the last week i think i did like seven kilos Damn. Um, so it's like big for a girl like i i can do it and i did it healthy and luckily i've got a fantastic you dietitian. Use Jordy? yeah yeah best in the world uh, yeah TFD. Yeah. um the fight dietitian geordie so i like that that is another thing that i'm very grateful for so like obviously if i had all that weight to cut and i didn't have someone as knowledgeable as him it would have been a different you wouldn't story no eh? nah. and i mean like as much as i hated it i was one i was in hawaii it was not that hard to be you know sad um and then uh two i just i didn't i i didn't really like um i didn't overthink it and i didn't do it bad so i wasn't like cutting into any storage of my body that was going to be um negatively impacting my health so that that and at the end of the day i did it pretty easily which is good like i did seven kilos seven kilos is a lot it's never going to be easy but i did it easily for my body which was cool yeah and i had a lot of muscle mass and that always makes a difference and everything like that so i cut all the weight made weight um yeah it was a big feat to even be in there you know i'd hardly even sparred because i was still getting used to the eye i can't see that well out of that left eye really? now yeah so Fuck. that's all the whole you know adjustment thing and um and then i lost and like, like it was just like a three round kind of stand up fight that was just like i found it like watching it back i found it pretty boring I didn't like fight. you just didn't get going I just didn't yeah i didn't pull any trigger in my brain yeah. my brain's like yelling at myself i'm like go like yeah. go dude like yeah let's go let's go let's go like and it's hard to and do i can sometimes, hear it from the though. corner and i'm like and i just couldn't like i i don't know what was going on but it's just like did um, you take any big shots nah see sometimes like protected this is, myself from that so this is me right oh, armchair fucking quarterback right now just the most this is the Go most off base person to give you a fucking comment about Tell me. <laughs> it's like the times where i surfed good i took a fucking big hit early 
like first like you just for for me surfing wise like if you go over the falls like you just try and take off on one late yeah. and you just go over the fucking falls and just get completely destroyed and then you get back up and you're like oh fuck it's not that bad like <laughs> i can actually deal with it and i always look at those fights and i'm like sometimes maybe you just need to get fucking smacked like just straight up and then like <laughs> like shake it off <laughs> and be like, like be like it's not that bad like i can fucking do this you know yeah so that's my like sometimes i look at those fights and i'm like fuck maybe one of you guys just needs to eat a shot and just get the fucking ball roll like know that you're in the fight yeah no on, honestly you are on the money like uh, like and that happened with my karate days happened with a whole lot of stuff but like sometimes even inspiring i'll need like a little mm. bink to be like oh yeah like, i'm I in here like, i got this i, I can like, take a yeah, shot go and it's it's so crazy i've had so many fights and i still each time you're a little bit in your head and then i guess this time i was even further in my head because of the eye and i was trying you to protect so it and, and yeah and i knew i needed to get another surgery after this fight so i shouldn't have really gone in with that mindset knowing that i don't want to make it worse than what it already is i like i didn't I didn't do anything dodgy with my medicals. Technically, I did everything by the book, but the medical system allowed me to loop through a little bit. Like, <laughs> we have great medicals. Like, MMA, we have to get MRIs on our head. We get our eye checks, all that sort of stuff. My eyes were in date, so... It, that, oh, so they didn't have to so check your eyes to check because you have already done it. Yeah, and so... I didn't really know if I was meant to be fighting because at the end of the day, ophthalmologists are no MMA expert, which is understandable because they don't know understand the sport, which is not obviously their niche. Yeah. Um, my ophthalmologist has been absolutely amazing in working with me to you know understand that I'm not going to quit fighting. So he's done his best and at his best amount of knowledge of the sport. Um, and he, he hasn't told me, obviously he was like, it's best if you stop, but you're obviously not gonna. So this is what we're going to do to help you on that journey, um, which is great. But no one necessarily knows whether or not you are or aren't meant to go mm. back. So, mm. um, and I, but it's just all at the same risk. It's all at the same risk, I guess, if I hadn't had all these issues and that was my mindset. But then knowing that I had to get another surgery, that maybe was just playing in the back of my mind. And then, so I think I just never pulled the trigger. And like, the only problem is the four ounce gloves, you know, like you can't just, take a shot yeah, you know what i mean problem. like and yeah, that's the problem yeah. and like and if it hits me in the eye then i can't do that either and that sort of thing because they are smaller glove like if it was like even tens or eights like with the like with the no fingers kind of thing like yeah. proper gloves like boxing gloves yeah that's the only problem with my sweet. theory mm. is that you just eat that one yeah. and it's that one that can fucking put it's the you. one that yeah, like yeah, kind of yeah. got with the jesiardo kind of vibes or yeah, something yeah, like that yeah. and you're just like damn like that's like not what we want to risk which but it's like you want to kind of get into a little bit of a firefight. Just get in a scrap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just get in yeah. the range a little bit more. Be like, yeah, in danger a little bit more. And yeah, then just yeah. jump out and be like, yeah. yeah. And every time, every time you get hit with four ounce gloves in a fight, you're just like, oh, it's not even that bad. Like, yeah. It's so crazy because everyone's like, how do you manage it or whatever, whatever? How do you deal with it? And you're like, it's so weird to say this, but it's not that bad. Like, in the moment, it doesn't. In the moment, yeah. You're not feeling it. Adrenaline's the there. Yeah, yeah. You're obviously thinking about the competition. You're thinking about winning. You're thinking about the tech technical side of things you're like i need to get points you know i need to do this this that i, I want to get it to the ground i want to stay on the feet whatever you're always thinking about all that sort of stuff if something glides on your forehead you're kind of just like oh that's a point down you're not really yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. there's ones and uh, every now and again like big bings that you're like oh shit like that. yeah oh, i got a little bit hazy there but we're, yeah, we're back on yeah yeah, for it. yeah yeah should have kept my chin down a bit <laughs> yeah. or i got caught off guard or whatever if you get knocked down or something like that yeah that's definitely a wake-up call but um in the general like just the the like probably i'd say like 80 percent of the shots thrown in like three round fights are just like you know you know scrapers and you're just like yeah i'm good i'm i can i can handle that I'm, i've done this before but for yeah whatever reason i just kind of never got to that point like yeah. you're saying i never got to the it's not that bad it wasn't that bad and i mean i was still taking some shots um but i never engaged enough i i, I wasn't doing like second phase attacks and all these other things that i looked back and critiqued but um it was just kind of like a shit way to lose because <laughs> yeah. you're just like, I just let myself down there. Like You'd rather go like, out on your yeah, sword kind of thing. I'd rather us have like, I'd rather, I definitely got what I think is the best version of my opponent at that time, Dana Silva. Um, and I feel like I should have given her my best version so that we could have, you know, really found out who was the ultimate fighter after that. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of like a bit of a disappointment thing, but um, 
I literally left the cage, like I said, chihood, and went out the back, and I got to share the um my corner room with um Alima, who was the co-main event, maybe or main event. Oh no, yeah, she was co-main. Um, and she's obviously Hawaiian from Oahu, so she had this massive walkout thing organized with a performance. Um, speaking on the keeping Hawaiian lands and Hawaiian mm. hands and um a full cultural and everything like that and they did like a quick um thing out the back like kind of like a uh, practice thing mm. and um it w- it gave me goosebumps it was like incredible and i just sat there and i was just like you're lucky to be in hawaii you get paid to f- get flown to hawaii to punch people in the face don't be sad like yeah. you don't have a you don't have like the right to be sad like yeah you lost that's you know it is what it is we'll assess it we'll get better we'll and just spinning it in like that quickly i think um for my last couple to that's be honest super dope. is just like one it's it's a conscious thing you got to do it and it's harder said than done but it it's so powerful like once Fuck you do yeah. it because then i just enjoyed the rest of my week i got to you know spend a week on oahu go to maui come back to oahu then fly back to san diego spend a i think it was a week or two in san diego and then go back to the gold coast such a horrible place and yeah come back there you know like i was like i can't be sad like i like this this happened for a reason i took up the fight obviously for a reason i had the influence that it was hawaii and i really wanted to fight in hawaii i maybe rushed myself whatever all of these factors played a part for whatever reason that's gonna display itself in the future and i'm better for the experience like of course maybe my record isn't maybe you know it does affect it does get stressful being in like a cutthroat industry like this where you're just like oh they're gonna cut me i'm gonna lose. what am i gonna do next who am i gonna fight next what i need to do to get myself back in there whatever all that's normal but at the end of the day like my life's good i've got money in the bag a roof over my head and food on the table like shut the fuck up keep doing what you need to do to get back you can't change the past you can only live in the present yeah and Mm. to to make that that call in the moment as well because i always think about i guess just the fact that that voice in your head is really just a tool Mm -hmm. like it's really just there to so you can get like an on like an honest assessment of like like the way you feel is because of a certain thing that happened to you and it's like okay cool so now i'm feel i feel anxiety about this bill that hasn't been paid all right i need to pay this bill mm. or i feel like shit because this this and this i know i probably could have done better and it's like all right so now you've just been like sent this notification like you don't need to sit in that all day all night weeks months years like this doesn't need to be this downward spiral it's like take what you can from the that voice take what you can from those feelings and then it's like all right bang how do i move forward and to be able to do that kind of like in the moment almost in real time Mm. it's like that to me is how you live a really good productive life it's just like just listen to that voice cashing it like taking it for its cash value and then just like ditching the rest like once it's once it's been said it's said and now let's just keep going and that's not negating from it's not to say you don't care. Yeah, and it's not saying that your feelings aren't important. They don't have value. Feelings are obviously everyone's feelings has value, and that's like the what you should give in your relationships and that kind of thing. But um, when you tell people to like not like dwell on it, don't dwell on it because at the end of the day, you're manifesting a, a bad a bad day, and you mm. and then you're living in the past and all that sort of thing. And that's also not saying to not deal with the problem. So mm-hmm. if you if you like if something bad happens, you get sad about it, you get anxiety, whatever, and then you're just like, oh, I'm good like and you're ignoring it you're bottling it up that's like a different story if you're like okay this makes me feel like shit but what is the solution to not feel like shit anymore that's yeah. at the end of the day being productive being proactive in fixing and um being in control of your life and your happiness because your happiness is your responsibility yeah. yeah yeah and then there's always like a there's again i just feel like things have like this long tail and i always use the example of like me not being able to get back into america the last time that i did and then i got fucking just ejecto cedo like you're back in australia now and then it's like the podcast so it's like right. in the mm-hmm. moment worst thing that ever happened to me like probably top five things in my life mm-hmm. and then it just turned around now to be like one of the top five best things that, <clears throat> that ever happened and i think that when you when you like have that perspective and and you can't get that perspective to your point without those failures so it's like if life just coasts along fucking sweet then you're never gonna like get that lesson and and do i know people that have been rocked by that one thing yeah and, and that, never that recovered. one thing just like fucking railed that like derailed the rest of their life you know or they're or they're in it for years and years yeah. before they figure it out and it's just like you want to and again it's like it's hard to 
I actually was just having this conversation with a mate the other day. It's like, I just almost don't give a fuck about my feelings anymore. You know, it's like as little as I could possibly give a fuck about my feelings. That's how I, that's how I try and live. And, and I mean, there's like, it's sometimes social and cultural as well. Like, oh, this just happened, man. You should feel real bad about it. It's like people almost expect you to feel some type of way. Yeah. And then you've got to like outwardly show like how bummed you are or how disappointed you are. Society or- like tells you like you got to cry. And like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, for sure. These are all healthy things to do and cry and stuff. But continuously reassuring the negative is not going to be positive long term. Feeling your feelings is definitely true. I'm not devaluing anyone's feelings or anything like that, but it's like, but what are you doing? Like, yeah, what, yeah. like you can sit there, there and complain and you can, yeah. And then you're just reassuring that complaint, whatever negative that you're talking about. And then you're just like, oh, everything's shit. I'm shit. This has happened. And then you're just reassuring that it's shit. So guess what you're going to get? More, More shit. shit yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's like, and that sounds so like, sometimes hippie to tell people and and that kind of thing and it's like oh well it's not that easy you know like i feel feelings and you're like yeah bro feel those feelings but what are you going to do like what are you going to do to change it like that's that's the only important thing is the solution to to moving forward and if life wasn't peaks and valleys then we wouldn't enjoy the good times and we wouldn't enjoy the bad times and it's just like that's something that's definitely been reoccurring in my life recently is that um to to share like a something that i know to share with people the two things that i stand by is that nothing lasts forever good or bad yeah so like if you're having a bad time it's not gonna last forever if you're having a good time it's not gonna last last forever forever. so enjoy the good times and ride through the bad times and that um you know always try find gratitude or the positive in everything which is so so much harder said than done but like you know like i got eye surgery right the positive was I came back to the Gold Coast. I get to spend more time with my family. I'm living with my mom. I haven't, you know, I've been traveling for the last five years. I haven't been able to spend this much time with her in a very long time. And um, that was the positive, you know. Yeah. And I, and then my friend who has kids, I've missed like a lot of their birthdays. And it kills me every time I miss their birthdays. I got to, you know, go to the mm. beach with them every day because I got eye surgery and I can't really do anything other than that. I couldn't even sweat. So it was like, I was like, find the positive. And that gratitude will pull you back, will ground you in a sense. It will just pull you back to where you really need to be. Find the positive and know that nothing lasts forever. Like that's two things that i just always go back to yeah it's such good advice and and the i i think about the feelings thing as like a point of diminishing returns so it's like if i you think about it as i guess like a math equation in a sense is like okay so up to this point the feeling of sadness or the feeling of anxiety is it's a positive thing because it's driving it's like highlighting an issue in your life and then it's like essentially the more you think about it the more time you've put into like the future outcomes essentially. Yeah. But then it's like now it'll be, it's like a bell curve. Like there's a point where like worrying about it is going to like reduce your quality of life. So it's like be anxious to the point where it's going to help your quality of life. Be sad, grieve to the point where it's going to help your quality of life and then it's like and then realize emotions that have like fuck all value yeah. like anger and like you said they're just triggers they're yep. just triggers to send you in the right direction they're yep. just yeah like that bill's giving me anxiety but it's just a, the anxiety is the trigger to pay the bill pay or the earn bill. the money to pay the bill yeah, if you yeah, don't have yeah. enough money so like use it use the trigger don't sit in the trigger like yeah don't get consumed by the negative yeah and and it's so cool like you know even when you said like uh the positives of the eye surgery immediately i was like like what are they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, like I, don't I don't think there is yeah. any. Yeah, but there is. Yeah, like they're all, there and it's is. like so specific. And I you know? live in a country where I get free healthcare. Like, yeah. are you being serious? Like, especially being in. I was in San Diego for three months. It happened in San Diego. Scared to go to the hospital. Yeah, I was like, there's Legit. no way I'm going to the hospital here. There's absolutely no way. Someone just told me they got um food poisoning that cost them like 1700 bucks i was like yeah nah yeah like that's food that shit is so (laughs) real so i lived there never had health insurance for the eight years that i was like there. that's living life dude for real (laughs) so i we went snowboard i had one of my best mates from cairns fly over his chick my ex uh we all went i was in tahoe at the time Mm -hmm. so we like went went snowboarding fucking life is great last day come down the hill there's like a full old granny in like pink helmet pink jacket pink fucking pants pink gloves pink skis and she just like got up without looking and i'm like flying down the hill and she just goes straight into like the run and i've just gone fuck no and i've like tried to sort of jump out of the way cartwheeled down the hill i ended up it was actually another fucking blessing in disguise 
So I end up elbowing myself in the ribs and I fucked up my kidney. So I had no idea, right? So I go to the house. I'm like shaking. I'm in so much pain. I'm like yellow and pissing blood. And I'm like, okay, guys, here's the deal. I'm going to call my mum. I'm going to call my dad. I'm going to tell him I love him. I'm going to tell him that if I die, I die. But I'm not going to fucking hospital. Because it was like this kind of thing for me to go to hospital. is probably like a $500,000 deal. I don't have that money. My parents don't have that money. I ain't paying off that debt for the rest of my life. Yeah, I'll take an L on this one. It was a gnarly fucking night. Woke up in the morning like, sweet uh, drove back to can uh, drove back to california started making the um making the arrangements to to go home so yeah i was like that scared that i was like do not under any circumstances take me to hospital my mom's like trying to get travel insurance i'm like yeah. like i feel like this is a pre-existing <laughs> condition at this point but again the fucking positive that come out of that was i found out i had one kidney so i had like all these like weird health problems no through my whole yeah through my whole fucking that ain't the universe like that's like bruh yeah so so (laughs) so i ended up having same deal i came home like i had six months worth of surgeries i was like in and out of hospital fucking constantly and then that kind of led to like the america shit but again it's like that led to me fucking up some busy shit which led me back to here which get like yeah life's good It 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 works out you know it's always and it's always hard to see at the the time so because you know that and because i think you and i have obviously had a lot of experiences with the negative yeah because we know at the in the time there's like a darkness that pulls you in and it's pulling you into that negative and pulling you into that depression and anxiety you just have to be like nah not right now like i'm just gonna wait and figure out what the what the reason is exactly but i know it's not gonna come initially and maybe not even gonna come a month maybe not even coming like a couple of years it's gonna come when you're having a podcast and you're talking about that reason and then you realize but you already you already lived it. You already experienced it. You know you already experienced the positive. So you got to experience the positive, and then it was just the hindsight that comes yep, at yep. like maybe a year, two years, maybe a month, maybe a week. You never know. But at the end of the day, you just know that it's going to come. But just later on, like, and that's like something that I just. It's like that trust in the universe, trust in the journey. Yep. That's what that means. That yep. means literally just trust. You know, it's already happened. Like, what are you gonna do? Like, you're gonna go back to that feeling, that negative feeling constantly. You're gonna live in the past and tell yourself like i experience this negative trauma all the time and yeah, you're just constantly yeah. reassuring it like no you can't you, you can feel your feelings about that and you, you don't have to be happy about what happened but you just have to not dwell on it and let it affect the rest of your life like oh for sure and i think that yeah it's it's kind of what you said is so true that it's like you just get better at taking the l's yeah and i think that yeah, that's one of the things is like learn how to lose in a sense. And and I think that that's probably one of the things, like if I think back about it now, I really think that being a motocross kid growing up and it's probably the same of being a fighter, you know, like put, put yourself in a situation where you like have to take losses. And I mean, I've broken so many bones riding bikes and, you know, I remember being a kid and like every time I broke a bone, I was like, I'm fucking done. That's it. I can't fucking <laughs> do this. And it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> but then over time, you just like realize that, you know, and my hip, like when I broke my hip a few years ago, it was like, that was so fucking shit. But that again, long tail, my jujitsu is so good now because I spent so much time rehabbing and stretching my hips got this like crazy flexibility out of it which i didn't really have before and now it's like that's a huge gain you know so i just i think that's one of the reasons i love motorsports for kids or i think fighting is it just like teaches you how to lose you know because yeah the more you lose the quicker like you rebounded in the dressing room yeah where it's like i lost but fuck i'll take it that's because of the years of losing in the gym the years of getting subbed the years of getting like losing a round of sparring or whatever it is and it's like i that's what i say to everyone like you can apply fighting specifically but a lot of sports to life just like put yourself in uncomfortable situations and feel that feeling after you've prevailed from it you may not have won but you're like fuck, i did it like man i just got smashed by like multiple people and i just was like getting ground and pounded for like three yeah. minutes straight and i'm gassed and i'm dieting and i'm like had a bad day and i fit, had to work today or whatever it was like back when i was on the local scene these are all the things that shaped me because i was working 40 50 hours a week training like six days a week obviously trying to do the best i could compete where i could blah 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 all of that stuff and the L's that I took in that like part of my life and that 
first mm. initial part of my journey um shaped me for the next l's that shaped me for the next l's that shaped me for the next l's and like knowing that you're never not gonna lose again like you're there's like uh, like i lost my last fight i'm obviously very positive that i'm gonna win my next few and that i'm i'm obviously working towards that i'm driven i'm motivated everything like that but i'm not in this fantasy land naivety that i'm never going to lose again i'm yeah. definitely going to lose something again it may and not be not fighting fight, yeah, yeah it's something else exactly and then so when that something else happens you i can i'm lucky enough to have experienced yeah. literal l's in the cage that i can then take that experience and apply them to the life l's and like and that's what's happening like my, one of my best best mates um just recently passed away in la got shot in la which oh, is like a no whole other conversation yeah and it's like it was horrible obviously i'm feeling my feelings um like at, I'm, i found out at the airport coming back from new zealand which is kind of random um but i was by myself which was kind of good and then i'm feeling my feelings and then i got back and i was like all right like what do we need to do do i need to you know do i need to reach out to his mom do i need to you know we've got to go find me we've got to get his body back from america to australia we've got to you know all these little things i was like now we're about the solutions you know because yeah, yeah. what am i going to do just be like oh, i'm so sad that he died absolutely he's not going to be watching me being like yeah bro like cry about me for the rest of your life yeah, he's yeah, gonna be, yeah. shut the fuck up janae get the fuck up help my mom she needs help <laughs> like yeah. and you know like let's get this sorted and pay homage to me by living your life it's like it's like that all those cliche things it's yeah. like you can't just like stay and that's the l that i took I took the l felt my feelings i got to luckily i'm financially stable enough to be able to go to sydney and and go to the funeral and all these things and then carry on and so on and so forth and like and and being at that funeral i knew that he would want all of us to do yeah. exactly that same thing take the l and just you know now live like that's what you have to, that's that's what life is comprised of losses yeah, yeah. and wins and the wins are what keeps us striving for more wins and the losses are what keeps us humble yeah like no nah, it's such a good recipe yeah so what what happened with the eye exactly it's a fucking gnarly deal it's to crazy, go through yeah. and like so what's the it's vision good. like right now it's not great um, really <laughs> so like um i can't read your shirt i can't read israel Oh, that's yeah. so gnarly just out of that one though this one's obviously killing it yeah it's holding it down yeah it's holding it down yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is mad and i have the glasses and um like i like them i just don't um like them with the lights and stuff sometimes or I just even like i went out for dinner i don't really like glasses but um nobody told me that um <laughs> that glasses were like that thing but and because it's just the one eye it kind of um i can kind of I, I think legally i'm allowed to drive actually as well but yeah so i was in san diego i finished obviously i've been hitting that eye plenty of times during the last like 10 years of fighting which makes sense um but i finished a boxing sparring and i had like a shadow what they call a shadow so it's just like a little black mark kind of on the inner corner of your eye so it's like say if that was the thing just like a little bit of it was missing and i was like mm, that can't be good mm. <laughs> um i've had tears retina tears and stuff in the past but i've Same never eye? um yes okay yeah yeah um but I've never had a detachment. Um, I also didn't really know what a retina was or a detachment was. <laughs> yeah. um, but I knew that I was not going to the hospital in America. So I was like, but I, I was coming back for Christmas. That was like one of my definite goals. Um, I hadn't been back in um, the Gold Coast since March, I think it was, with lockdowns, traveling, hotel quarantine and everything like that, not being able to get back to the Gold Coast because the borders were closed. Um so I knew I was coming back for that reason. I organized my ophthalmologist appointment before I left, but it was still maybe like a month or so to I touched back down in Oz. So um, I did kind of leave it for a little bit, touch back down in Sydney. I went to my ophthalmologist and he was like, you need to go get surgery like today. And I was like, so did it get worse in that month? Mm, it not uh, kind of like it would have but luckily um so the thing about retinas um so and he was like yeah it's retinal detachment so that's obviously the issue um retinas are like wallpaper um and so basically if you tear that wallpaper the fluid um from inside is going to get behind uh. the, the wallpaper and start peeling it off basically the good thing is that I'm young, so as a young person, my fluid is quite more quite dense, which is good. The older you get, it gets a little bit Thinner. more liquefied, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. going to be a, like a pretty rapid onset. Um, lucky enough, I've got like a bit of Wolverine genetics to always tell people. Yeah, um, yeah. And it didn't get too bad, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if I had gone in the day after that it had happened or That's that month, then. they would have yeah, been like, okay. you need to go get surgery today because they treat it like an emergency, yep. which is positive. Um, and so... 
Uh, the f- other funny thing was that I was going from the appointment. I was driving to the Gold Coast and illegally crossing the border. <laughs> oh yeah, because <laughs> yeah. it was just like I ne- I ne- I was like I'm not missing Christmas. I don't care. I like, think I remember talking to you a bit yeah. around then actually. I'm not missing Christmas. Like I'm getting yeah, yeah, to the Gold yeah, Coast. Like yeah. I don't care if they arrest me. I'm getting to the Gold Coast. I need to see my mom. Good on you. It's just me and mom. Fuck that like shit. it's always been just me and mom. And I haven't seen her since March. And it's Christmas. You know, like it, we d- we're not like super religious or anything like that. But it's just like That's with all my travels, yeah. it's just like Christmas is the time. You know that I come back. Yeah. Know, or like if I can or somehow we spend it um so that was like the thing he was like oh well, you're not driving are you i was like no no i, I wouldn't do that that would be crazy so anyway i drove to I'm a professional um, fighter people drive me area <laughs> yeah. so i drove to from sydney to the gold coast <laughs> i stopped actually in coughs harbour because i was like oh maybe i should just like do it in two stands but i've done that drive a lot of times so i think eight hours and so go back and then um, I tried to organize it through private, but she was honestly like I, I, best medical system here. She was like, um, she was like, if you go to the hospital and admit through emergency, it's an emergency. So they have to admit you. So I literally went um, the next day to the Gold Coast Hospital, um, got there at like 8, 9 a.m., was in surgery by like 5, I think. So that's dope. Yeah, that day. So it was pretty good. Um, but what they do is they put like a silicon rubber band, basically. It's called a buckle. Um, I'm sorry if I'm butchering this for any ophthalmologist or that ophthalmologist. Many but <laughs> yeah. yeah, anyone that knows about eyes, I don't, but I've, this is what I've learned. So it's like a buckle that's kind of like pushing the walls in closer so that it, um, kind of like brings the wallpaper closer to the walls is the best way to explain it and um it makes it easier for it to reattach because they can't necessarily attach it themselves yeah they can yeah. just take the fluid out um and cryo and then try up. and like stick yeah. it back essentially and cryo up the tear so there's no more fluid kind of affecting it so um yeah that kind of went okay two weeks later um i went to my follow-up that was all right and then i went to go get glasses and my pressure was really high and so she sent me back to the surgeon and i actually ended up having to get even more stuff done the tear had opened i don't know if it was my fault or not i may have been rolling um and i was told not to but (laughs) i was like rolling like what's like what's a little bit of rolling with jimmy gonna do like he's like you know my most trusted training partner like uh, and and even like we had a conversation but i was like i should be fine and then but i don't really obviously understand the extremity of the injury and the fact that it's an eye so i can't really put my head backwards or i shouldn't be like inverting and yeah, stuff like, yeah, like all yeah, these yeah, things yeah, that you do yeah. in jiu-jitsu like it actually would have been better for me to hit the bag probably yeah like which i kind of in my head for some reason thought the striking would have been the worst thing because it was like the thing that sort of happened but anyway um so it reopened i had to get a gas bubble in there so they pop a gas bubble in um, which is weird, right? But they use gravity. So I had to, my friend had just come from Melbourne that day to live and lean up my move. Cause I was like, I was like, oh, I need you to come here. Like, cause yeah. I was like, I'm having the worst time. Like, obviously we can all be positive as much as we can, but I was taking multiple drops. My face was swollen. It was yeah. just like, you know, not the go. Um, and then I was like, oh, I just got to go get these glasses. The next minute I go to the a surgeon, we get a fucking bubble of gas thing and i had to like hold my head in a certain spot so then the gas kind of just like pushes the retina back down on its own yeah. so i was like walking around like this for a whole day which was enjoyable <laughs> lucky old mate didn't care um and then the next day they cryoed it up again but this time i was awake so it was a whole different Experience, thing to yeah. do whereas when they, they did it in the surgery i was asleep so i didn't even know whereas like i had to like hold my eye in a certain position and he puts the like, pen thing on, thing on yeah and like pushes out the liquid nitrogen i'm guessing um which is a weird feeling and then obviously in between all these you get like um, needles of anesthetic put into the eye and stuff like that which Fuck. is not cool and then um and then Did you ever watch the- total recall when you're a kid <laughs> Yeah. Do you remember that where they yeah. like put the fucking needle in the eye? Was that that's what it was, I'm right? Pretty sure, yeah. I remember always being like super scared of eye shit because of fucking total recall. Yeah. I just imagined that shit going down. I was like, Whoop. I just never thought it would happen to me. That's the yeah. thing. Like yeah. I was like, that'll never happen to me. Like that's yeah. crazy. Like oh, and like even like um. I think it was about May last year. I went and got dinner with the Ruka crew. So that's Michael Bisbing as well. So it was, it was Michael. I was going to say, you spoke to him about. <laughs> and but. a few other people. And um, Rebecca was there and stuff like that. And Rebecca's from, um, his wife is from Ipswich. So that's really cool. Like, what? Bisbing's? I know, right? Really? I was like, I was like, oh, you're Aussie. But where? I was like, where are you from? She was like, She's Ipswich. like, fucking Ippy bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're not from Ipswich. She's like, I know Ipswich. Like, you're not from Ipswich. She was like, I'm from Ipswich. And I was like, 
Like, that is heavy. I didn't know they produced people as good as you. <laughs> like, That's so sick. <laughs> but it was really cool. But anyway, like, at dinner, he pops his eye out, like his fake eye thing. And I'm just like, man, that's crazy, bro. Like not even thinking. Seven months later, I too will have similar experience. Obviously, I haven't lost my eye yet. And I've done, uh, we had a different journey, but very similar, same injury. And actually, he got a multiple surgeries as well his first one didn't go to plan as well so like it was funny because as i was on my way over to hawaii um my my melbourne to la flight i'm guessing um the bisbing documentary was on the oh, plane okay. and because i was like i've been trying to find it and i just like i was in camp so i was a bit busy as well so i didn't find it and i was like i'll find it later um because it'd be interesting to watch obviously now with my eye issues and it was on the plane so i was like well looks yeah, like yeah. we're gonna strap in and, and let's figure out if like it's a similar story and it was and it's like a really good documentary really well put together really well explained where's it where's it on like do you know where, where you can watch I think it maybe like maybe amazon prime or something okay. like that like i remember he's a j at, man oh such a gangster and obviously then you also get the other side of like his journey and just his career in general yeah, yeah. And where it all came from so that that in itself would have been motivating but then having this like kind of similarity with the eye that just made it even more um, relatable and interesting to watch so that was kind of good thing going over there and then uh yeah so i got the first surgery the second stuff done everything was kind of sweet kind of got the go ahead and i was like yeah i'm gonna fight he was like yep cool and then um a couple of weeks before the fight he was like oh we have to do another surgery and I was like, oh, if you do it now, like, will that mean I can't fight? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, can we do it after? <laughs> like, and he was like, I knew you were going to say that too. Mm. Like, I was like, but what if we just do it after? Like, <laughs> what if we just push it? Like, how much worse can it get? He's like, what? so what the problem was, wasn't that anything necessarily went wrong, but all the cells and st scar tissue and stuff settle at some point. Obviously, there's like floaties and there's things that are not bent to be in that place because you've closed up the hole, but, you know, the they could they've crossed shit over in between, yeah. yeah yeah like fluid has gotten to the wrong side and vice versa so you know that all that stuff kind of the cells settle um so it's called a membrane peel so where it had settled is basically i built scar tissue on my macula and your macula is basically what sends the image to the brain mm. so it doesn't matter if you can detach if you detach your whole eye um, and not the macula, you can still recover it. If you detach the macula, it's very hard to, it's still recoverable, but it's very hard to recover. Um, because once that part's detached, then you've got to, you know, reconnect all the things. However mm. fucking crazy eye works. Um, so that scar tissue building on the macula is going to one warp my vision and two, like it needs to be taken off. Otherwise it's eventually going to degenerate. Yeah, yeah. Make issues for the macula. So the problem with that means that they have to go inside the eye, peel it off. <laughs> and then like and then close it up and do all that sort of stuff so like obviously that's a bit of a bigger surgery in a sense because they've never been up until this point he's avoided going in the eye because there's more complications mm. op opportunity for complications and stuff like that so um yeah so he finally um he says that and i was like well what if i just like dip out to hawaii and come back and he was like yeah i'll, I'll allow it which is cool that's like he's honestly um choi tran if you're listening to this which is very unlikely absolute gangster i don't think i could have done this journey i think it would have been a lot harder i could without, been to, without someone as understanding and open-minded as him he's very busy there's a lot of people with eye issues not a lot of people my age so obviously that kind of put me um kind of made me shine out of the crowd in a sense but just him being understand i've been to a lot of gps average joe gps kind of just civilians that are just like well you know if you've got an injury or i've, I've screwed my foot up and they're like oh we'll just stop fighting yeah I'm yeah like, big oh, deal yeah you can't really fight anymore kind how of it works like yeah. i'm like that's not really an option and i know a lot of people have dealt with this a lot in in there's different sports moto all that yeah, sort of stuff yeah. they're just like oh you just quit like you're just like oh that's not really gonna work yeah, you'll never me. ride again yeah no no, no well i will yeah because i could today <laughs> but i'm just gonna go yeah. to a different gp yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it's one of those things where he never kind of gave me that um feeling that i was like yeah gonna be off in any way so that was really cool went over to hawaii fought the fight came back got the other surgery and everything has been pretty good since then it's a lot clearer we did the membrane peel um obviously it's a 
bit painful and I had drops and all these other things. Um, but so far my follow-ups have been great. Everything's kind of going well. There's no other issues so far. So it's really just the buckle has changed the shape of the eyeball. So that's why I can't see. It's not necessarily because of the detachment. So that's what I've got in my eye. So that's what I have to wear. So I've got like an astigmatism. So my yeah. pupil is like shaped like a football, not a circle. You're the third person to tell me that. Really? Like think. So it's you, Brenton and Jake. Jake Anderson? You know Jake yeah, Anderson. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Jake Anderson has that and Brenton Mumford yeah. and you. Yeah, so like I can see like sweet. Yeah. Like I take my glasses off, but it's just blurry in that like the image just doesn't, like I can't read street signs. I can't yeah. like, but as far as like seeing, like I can see everything, you know what I mean? And you've probably been used to it now. I've had it my entire like, life. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And that's the other, like same with Jake. He's like, I never really wear the glasses. He's like, I should, but... Like if you're, and say with Brenton, Brenton didn't even know until he went in for one of his eye exams um, for a fight and they were like, oh, you realize you got this thing and he, um, for the UFC, like oh, for like the ultimate fighter or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. that. And he was like, oh, my eyes are fine. Like everyone can't see that. <laughs> They're like, no, bro, everyone can no, everyone read can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the um, number plate on other people's car. Yeah. yeah. That's what they're there for. <laughs> like, yeah, and no. I was like, yeah, bro, that would be crazy. Yeah, no, mine's been my whole life. It's like that, eh? I just can't. And like, I if I um, the reason why I wear my glasses, obviously, like I can see better, but it's like big deal. Like if you can't read a few fucking letters, but my eyes get tired because mm-hmm. it's like a uh, it, whether I'm trying to or not, my eyes like straining super fucking hard. So it's like I can read a book without glasses, but in five minutes, I'm gonna be like actually tired from it. My my body's gonna be telling me like no it's like this is too much and you're overworking it yeah and then especially at night there's Mm. just like nothing like it's very hard to see at night yeah and that's the without the glasses driving at night time i'm like oh this is a bit dodgy so how's it for fighting then like is it is it change your depth perception is it any of like that stuff you're dealing with so that was what they kind of said was going to happen first like um yeah the depth was going to be off like so at the end of the day i do have sight it's just nearsighted so i'm talking like yeah like that's clear anything from there on is like pretty blurry um but obviously it gets corrected to better than 2020 with the glasses but um it's illegal to fight with contacts in so i just wanted to just get used to it the way it is i was like i got the other eye you know i am an orthodox fighter so this is technically my lead eye but it doesn't mean i can't see out of the other one obviously it's just like um one i got had to take a while to get used to it my, my depth was a little bit off i was like no it should be sweet you know like i fought you could feel it hitting pads like where you I were started actually... with the bag and even like the bag i'd just like throw a hook and miss i'd be like whoa really like i was like that's interesting like i didn't think that was going to happen i thought that my body and my muscle naturally... memory would yeah. still be yeah. like yeah we're on um but i guess not which was fine but it didn't take long like it um i've been doing this since i was like like i've been doing martial arts since i was 11 like mm. it's not gonna take long for yeah, my you body are to adapt. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Lucky <thing. laughs> yeah. um but i was like it'll be sweet and then once i got used to that then obviously out of the pad work on out of the sparring on jujitsu is a different story that's pretty cruisy the only thing is um if like you know say like if you've like taken someone's back and your eyes kind of on their lat, like your face is sort of squished yeah, up against yeah, their yeah, lat. Yeah, yeah. If like, if say that happens on this side, this eye gets covered, then then you like can't see much. out of it. Yeah. But I mean, like I can still see shapes and colors. So at the end of the day, like I know that there's a foot there somewhere. I just might not be like hundred percent accurate as to where it is. Yeah. So it's just adjusting to those things. And obviously then there's the idea if I fight and I get cut and like blood gets in this eye and I can get uh, that eye or just like, these are the things that are maybe. Yeah. yeah they're yeah. just like maybes are gonna happen i think in the general like i'm pretty safe like if bisbing can win a title with one eye i've, I've got no excuse so have like, you spoke to him since no not really you need to, you I, need I really to try talk to yeah, him. yeah i should i try i was gonna try catch up with them when i was in um orange county is that where he's and, living uh yeah pretty sure huntington beachish maybe like that our definitely new, orange county our area. new studios in orange county oh really yeah i'd love How to cool. get him on rukas you know rukas yeah, 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 yeah 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 so that like um i'll always go up to at least ruka sick and costa mesa and then just kind of bum yeah well, so orange it's county, in so. costa mesa we've we've just oh, got like a new, yeah 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 That's mad. and so is um isn't carnage's gym around there nathan corbett's gym i don't know I think I know I know it's near Ruka. I know it's in Orange County, but I just don't know where. I, he was obviously just here, so 
should ask but but yeah Ooh, that's mad yeah. that makes it even better because yeah. like that's my hub you know like my american hub is like san diego like i'll stay in san diego just because it's more chill yeah um but i'll just I love sd yeah oh best you can't not yeah. um and then i'll just go to orange county i used to only really go up to la for my friend and that, so like maybe every now and again i'll have to go to la for like i don't know someone will be like we've got a fights on or something like that we'll go up there but i hardly ever go that high um just because i don't really love la that much yeah. but yeah which is why yeah. and then um because why go to la when you can go to huntington beach like yeah. why go to la when you can go to Costa mesa like so did, i used to live in temecula <laughs> yes yeah. no because remember my i fought in temecula that's right and you were like yeah, i used yeah, to live yeah, here yeah, yeah. and i th- that was before i kind of understood yeah, it was california that you yeah fought. yeah kind of didn't so really... i used to play golf there all the time <gasps> It's such a nice casino. Like, yeah. I was like, this is bougie as hell. We went to like yoga in the morning on fight day and stuff like that. Like went to the it's resort. It's a big hotel. It's yeah. like a big casino. It's they one of the bigger a- ones. UFC there recently, actually. Did they? At yes. Pachanga? Um, Cheeto versus Tom Cruise. That was, was, at, was Pachanga. That at Pachanga. Because they were like, oh, it's in San Diego. I was like, it's not, but okay. Like, it's yeah. It. It's <laughs> yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. It's Indian San Diego. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's heritage land. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But okay, yeah. Um, but that's why, like, all the San Diego crew, like, and the that's Orange dope. County, LA crew got to go. Because isn't Dom from San Diego? Yeah, yeah. And, and then hey. Cheetos in OC. Yeah, that's yeah. So that was dope. perfect. Local okay, yeah. yeah. And then both in Temecula. That's, and we went to, uh, um, I did a jiu-jitsu comp in Marietta. Yeah, so the yeah. same town, same basically. Shit. Yeah. yeah. No and I, like, shit. Because I didn't really get that it was the same town. Then we kind of got near there. And I was like, oh, I fought like near here. And then it reminded me of like the old town area. Yeah. Where yep. the, like, yep. the, that really nice cafe. I don't even remember what it was. But I literally looked through my stories on my Instagram from when I was in Temecula and I fought. And I was like, this is where we're going for lunch. And like we went there and everyone was like, this is so nice. And I was like, yes. Yeah. I, it's a, like, it's I a, may not be from here, but I know the spots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's pretty cool. So, yeah, you've got like Menifee. Um, <clears throat> Um, Marietta, Temecula, they're all like, it's fucking the same thing, yeah. really. Yeah, and then yeah. it, from there, there's like a little bit of a, of a split. Yeah. But um, yeah, so our new, our new studio is, so like, d- have you seen how we, we've done like the US ones? So we just got a room that looks no. like this. Oh. And it's like, yes. it's yeah, a, yeah. I would have, yeah. So it's, uh, so maybe it's, just not realized it was, yeah, it's just like yeah. a video call pretty much. So, like, ah. I've set it up and then we like mix it together. So, it's a like, bougie zoom. yeah, right. like a super bougie. Well, <laughs> when everyone was doing Zoom in COVID, yeah. I did a few of it and I was like, I just can't do this. Like, this isn't <laughs> what I do. Can't get them and, uh, so then we had a, a friend of mine, we actually just did it in like his spare bedroom and we made it like look like this studio. Um, but then he had a kid, shout out to Jacob, by the way, but he had a kid and like all that. So I was like, you know what, let's officialize this, uh, deal. So we have like a full soundproof studio in Costa Mesa now, full-time staff that are there. So like we can just, to start you gotta get like yeah. Cheeto on well yeah so I really want to get oh, Cheeto God. on so Jack Freestone uh, that I was talking about the surfer mm-hmm. him yep. and Cheeto are like boy. Jack's a purple belt in Jiu Jitsu oh, nice. and uh, so him and Cheeto are boys and then like yep. Danny Ricardo and him are, are boys so I yep. really really want to get, get yeah. Cheeto on well, and Bisping guys. as well Bisping. I fucking loved Bisping since Ultima Fighter Day yeah like such so a G sick, eh? yeah I mean just like to represent from England and stuff like that like that's like crazy like the stuff that he did for the uk like people think the uk is massive and it is massive but then like yeah he's like him and leon are the only two uk champions yeah and you're like bro that's crazy because um connor's from um ireland all right the island the north or south that's not part of the uk anyway yeah but yeah so you know it's a different story like and it's just like dude this is amazing like he was <laughs> a real pioneer like before you're right like before there was like real representation you know and he was like the first like mixed martial artist you know like and i remember all those early fights they would talk about the fact that the americans have the wrestling and like he always held his own as a as a wrestler or like i guess a counter wrestler in a sense and he came from like a street scrapper too which i never knew like i surmised but i mean you never know really anyone's story of what brought them into and these days in mma every like some people have a picket fence and they do mma you know yeah yeah yeah. it's not always just about like the i had a troubled childhood kind of vibe i didn't have a troubled childhood either you know like i just yeah you were a karate kid like yeah Yeah. (laughs) doing best and i was just like um kind of surprised at how 
he still stayed motivated to turn that kind of energy and the the bar fights and all that sort of stuff into a career and, and make it into what he is that's insane like and at a time where you know the UFC was in a different stage of its life and a, a yeah. little younger of maturity and and you know it was a different um thing to navigate but he stayed through to through that transition as well and I remember I was at the Rockhold Bisbing one fight was that where he won the Sydney. title no, he won it the second time. So he lost to Rockhold first. Yes. I kind of thought Rockhold was going to win because that was when Rockhold was kind of like up and coming, the, young, yeah. you know, um, Adonis kind of vibes. And then um, I think he finished it in the third, maybe. I might be mistaken, but it was in Sydney. And then the second fight they had, and from the information from the documentary, it was like Rockhold didn't quite take it as seriously yeah, yeah. as well. Um, and Bisbing shouldn't have fought because of all the eye stuff. He like faked his way into yeah. that, right? Like that's the one where he faked his eye exam, basically. And like basically Perillo, Jason, oh, helped that's him right. like yeah, yeah. do the little cues and be like, yes, it's that. And then, and they got, I think, I think also maybe, maybe it was the doctor or something that helped him as well. That Man, was like, if you put that in a movie, like, let's say you watch, like, an I'm MMA movie. You'd be like, fuck off. Get the fuck out of here with this shit, you know? But, like, real life, that's what actually But happened. I, like, yeah, I know Jason. I know Michael. And I'm like, yeah, they definitely did that. I don't, I do not believe any so of this. So like, And then he won a world title. And then you won like 140 a world years old. title. Yeah. In one of the most, like, at that time, that division was so deep, too. Like, yeah. I was just like, bro, like, that's insane. And, like, and even Perillo um, apparently was just, you know, like, men like we're we're taking up i think it was like kind of late notice or something and he was filming a movie or something i might get all these details wrong but i think that's pretty on point he was like yeah filming maybe the expendables or something and and like you know he was starting to navigate into that thing they gave him the opportunity someone pulled out a rock hold and he was like yeah i'm taking it i'm getting that title in one knocked them out hectic one eye yeah yeah that's a that's a big play that's a big dude doing big moves he deserves it too like i love i just love with fighting that it's just seems like it seems like fighting and mixed martial arts in particular just gives you these crazy fucking stories that you could just yeah like if you put him in a movie ridiculous like yeah. and i think about bisping getting a title uh the, you know the way that he got it like with everything that you just outlined and then and towards the end of his career like and a guy that he, hall of famer yeah deserved the title and because never of the eye stuff and like I know that feeling, he had started to you know open up his horizons and being like, look, man, like if they you know find out about this eye stuff, then I'm not going to be able to fight. So I'm kind of on the end. So I need to look like avenue into other things. And then the opportunity comes up. You're thinking about or not retiring, but knowing that you might get stopped. Door. Yeah. And then you get a world title. Yeah. Like, the bro. Get out of here. Yeah. That's amazing. Like, well, dude, I think about the same with so, like inspired. Oh yeah. And I think the same with Diaz and, yeah. and Ferguson. It's just like, I'm so fucking glad that Kazmat did not get his hands on Nate Diaz. Everyone that wa- like, that was wasn't going to be, yeah, that was not going to be a good deal. But like the way that Diaz, like the way that he was through the media, through that whole situation, like took on Tony gave us an absolute war wins that fight and then just like dips out of the ufc just a complete god like the way that he should have gone out like just the fans won like the mma won the fans won and he got where he deserved yeah and and like because the dia i actually saw um it was a memory i think this time last year nick fought against lola lola um on the undercard uh, like uh, on the main card but underneath uh the volkanovsky and brian ortega fight yes so that was like such a great this time last year literally i think it was like last weekend last year um was like such a great fight we did not get the nick diaz that we wanted no we got i don't know who that guy is but we got uncle nick i think like at max and it was sad oh i remember i remember posting it and i was like we didn't get the nick day as we wanted but you know it's like cool to see him in there and robbie law is a gangster for sure like another veteran too so it was like another like cool old school kind of fight in a sense we definitely didn't get it that made nick in the first place like when he when he knocked out yeah and like, so it was like cool to see, but you also don't want them to end on that. And I highly doubt we'll see Nick again. Mm. Um, I mean, maybe, but I highly doubt it. We'll see obviously more of Nate for sure, I reckon, but Nick's a different story. And so for Nate to come back and then come out in a good way, that was like such a positive kind of yeah. end to the Diaz brothers, not end, but middle ground for the Diaz brothers story. I think that makes a big Can difference. Can you go on the UFC's Instagram, Griff? I think um, 
there was that's probably why i come up because it was a, a year ago um but th- after the fight when uh when lawler's like are you okay bro and yeah. then he, and then he was like he's like i'm good and he's like nah man in life like are you okay in life because oh like God, I forgot he's, about that. yeah he's like we need to fucking kill it bro like we need to do this together so go down it, they post like 300 things a day yeah. so that'll probably be i don't it. know who does socials but fuck they kill it eh? yeah Wait, Bonacles slow down, as well, guys. down. Oh, yeah, how is that? And Jack Jenkins. Um, mm, keep going, keep going, going, keep going. Oh, oh like maybe there. Say, oh, there. No, no, no there. Oh, this one there. Yep, yeah, bang. Play that one. Down. No, down one, down one. There we go. Volume. Oh. So good, eh? <laughs> Let's fucking get there, you know what I'm saying? And, like, you do know what he's saying. Yeah. You guys just had, like, a bit of a scrap, so you might be um, a bit hazy. But you're thinking about, I th- feel like that's the maturity in that's the journey real. that we're talking about it. Yeah. These guys have both had the L's, the ups, the downs, the in-betweens, and they know that at the end of the day, the most important thing, same, chicken skin, baby. That's crazy. And the most important thing is your life, you know, yeah. quality of life. Yeah. At the end of the day, your emotions, you can take the L's, you can do whatever. You can stand there, camaraderie, being a good person, having respect, ethics, moral compass. Yeah. Life is the most important thing. doesn't matter about all this fucking money shit and yeah. glory and all of that. Like, that's what that showed me. And I was just like, yeah, like, what a great representation of our sport, especially to those people that view it in a I bit of a negative I completely agree. And, like, to have two dudes that just stand in the middle of an octagon for 15 minutes and just belt the fuck out of each other. And for at the end of it to be like that much love, that much respect, it's just that like that's the picture of MMA. Like yeah. that's what that's what it gives us, and that's what experience. I want people to see in it that don't see that. And it's like the the level of respect that you have for a person. And I think like yeah. that's martial arts across the board. You know, like mm. I rolled yesterday um, there with a guy like we'd never rolled before, and then there was like there it, like a foot. There was like a foot pop, then I was like, I felt real bad. And I'm like, I went over after training and I was just like, real sorry. You know, like you just give yeah. that. And then the level of like respect. And I'd never met him before that day. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it, there was such like, and I left the gym feeling like, that's why I fucking do this. You know what I mean? Like that's a, there's a, it's a gnarly thing to like go to war with somebody you've never met. Like I'm trusting him. He's trusting me. And then we like come together at the end of it. And it's just like, are you all good? I'm sorry. Like, you know, blah, blah, yeah. they, they and then there's just that ultimate level of respect that got me and that guy will be like super sure. tight now. Yeah, you know what a I couple mean? Of months. You guys are going to be out here getting coffee and shit. And it's going to be mad. Like <laughs> yeah. one of the homies. Like, yeah. and, but and it's like, cause you guys it gives have, you that. it's hard to explain that we have like, no malicious intent with having intent to destroy. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to sub you. I want to fuck you up. And I want to put you in uncomfortable situations. And I want to like dominate. But I don't want to hurt you. Yeah. Like it's such a weird thing to say because people are like, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. But it does make sense to us because we're like, look, I want to get the points. I want to get the sub. I want to get the win. Yeah. But I don't want anyone to not be going home to their family. So I don't want anyone to not be picking up their kids later today. I don't want anyone, you know, like to be going to the hospital or going to the doctors or whatever. None of that. We're just here to win and learn and, and be the best kind of like primal version of ourselves. But once we leave this gym, everyone should be sweet, like mentally, physically, or spiritually. Yeah. Like yeah. we all should be good. And I think that's like such a valuable thing that, yeah, martial arts gives you. And even like the other day, Tuesday, I finished sparring and I'm standing there with Mill. I've known Mill, owner of Combat, They're Mars great, Mookie, man. one of my favorite people Shout in the out. world. Same. Shout out. Um, <clears throat> I've known him since I was 15 years old. So that man has really seen my journey like firsthand and not like, you know, you see someone and you dip off. Yeah, and I was like, going to say, he ain't dipping in, in and out. Yeah, 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 we've always kept in touch and literally like combat opened three years ago yesterday. Oh, they, wow. They have the same birthday, which is yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, And then... Um, yeah, happy birthday too, by the way. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm ignoring. 28, oh, I just realized I was 28 on the 28th. Oh. Missed that opportunity yesterday. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so... Yeah, he's seen everything and we're just having discussions about martial arts and about life and about all sorts of stuff. And then like we leave it um, like a sum it up. We're just like we're both self-aware. We're both like have come a long way in our journeys and and, and being different versions of ourselves along that way. And then we kind of like I kind of left and I was like, 
you don't really have a lot of opportunities to have these deep and meaningful mm. conversations. Like I just got punched in the face for an hour. I, I rolled for an hour and then I did um, sparring for like an hour and a half or whatever. And then I finish and I get to stand there and it kind of like, it opens up this other area of your brain in a sense or another emotional part where you kind of want to like dive into crazy yeah, topics. You, 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 maybe you feel okay to be like vulnerable with people yeah. because they've like just seen you, like you can trust that person because you've just literally because like when you're when you're doing jiu-jitsu and if someone's like got a rear naked choke on you like you die if 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 they don't let go you're dead yeah and like we just accept like that's such a it's so obvious of a thing that you don't even have to say that like you you know what i mean like no one in the gym ever says like oh can you please make sure that you let go when i tap because i'll die but like that's actually the reality of it so maybe it's like there's so much faith and so much trust that you actually do feel okay to be vulnerable to these people because you're giving them so much of your trust before you even have the conversation yeah and there's not a lot of that's why i say mma or martial arts is like the most primal version of self-expression because at the end of the day it kind of is this is the rawest version of yourself in like you know this isn't wrestling this isn't wwe this is like real fighting like Mm. we have to be our realest version you can't hide yourself in a fight like if you're a coward like we're gonna find out if you're you know you know you're hesitant or um questioning yourself or not if you've got an ego we're gonna see it we're gonna see it like and you can have these personas these like media personas but that's not your fight persona like and for those that are well versed in martial arts can see through yeah they can see the difference yeah so it's like because it is your most primal version of self-expression then you're gonna you know be in a state where you're just like navigating your own identity at the end of the day so sometimes it taps into those other like weird topics or whatever that you maybe just don't have the opportunity to sit down and speak with people yep. about and like i'm a bit of an introvert and i kind of i'm an only child hang out by myself live by myself that kind of thing so day to day like i'm by myself but then i have the opportunity to have this community that i go to in the afternoons and i am i can sometimes walk in not say a word to anyone do an hour of training and leave or i can walk in yeah do a few jokes maybe it's someone's birthday maybe this is happening maybe acc's on on. maybe fights are on or whatever have a convo maybe have a convo after grab food after and i'm just like exposed to this community that i've had consistently since the age of 11 but really since mma since age of 15 um that have just like opened me up to a world of different demographics that i probably wouldn't have like ended up hanging out with and just a different amount of experience and conversations that i wouldn't have probably been able to have if i didn't do martial arts maybe different hobbies open that up i don't really know like because honestly i haven't really done anything other yeah, than yeah. fighting for a long time but and you don't need to but yeah i'm over it now like yeah. I'm, we're not really like swaying from the one journey but um but it's just like i do know that the other hobbies like don't really um give you that i guess same, allow you yeah because yeah, you, you don't have that high risk high reward like you're saying like you don't have that we could die here at every hobby yeah, <laughs> that yeah, people yeah. have and obviously this isn't a hobby anymore for me it's a career and it's a passion and that kind of thing but at the end of the day like it just gives you just a weird different opening and different avenue and access to um conversations and, and moments that i don't know if i would always have had if i didn't do it so yeah like it makes me like really grateful to be able to just have these crazy post-training conversations and being like well what if we like you know did this or what if we did this and then i noticed from this or whatever i don't know it was just like very eye-opening yeah no it is cool i know exactly yeah i know exactly what you're saying about that like i mean some of my boys um from you know the gym and like i've moved gyms now and it's like you sit you still have these like crazy deep connections with these guys that you know i put in like six years with with some of these boys and like they're literally brothers you know yeah and it's like quick friends man like you can make real quick friends with people that you i guess yeah like you can really see like this guy is super humble this guy is so good at what he does like i respect like my my friend shane i mean i talk about him all the time like he's one of my like dudes i look up to in yeah yeah like you know i used to work with him that's right you did huh oh boy yeah, yeah. Up, so he's our boy Congrat- but, yeah congratulations on baby yeah yeah and like that but else, yeah. i'm looking at him as like he's a dope father he yeah. runs his own academy like he runs his life like a fucking g and we've had a lot of like cool conversations that work he's very self-aware he's it's crazy, always huh? constantly working on improvements and things like that and like that's something that i feel like then when he got it like he 
had just got into jiu-jitsu when he started working with us. And I feel like that kind of was just a perfect compliment for yeah. like his journey. And as you can see, he's now thrived in it. And yeah. He owns his own gym. He literally went from a white belt to like owning his own gym. And like and seeing dude, that was cool. He had the goal of when he was a white belt, his goal was get a black belt and get his own academy. I actually love his story. And I mean, I know he like, I've yeah. asked him a million times through the podcast, yeah. but he just doesn't want to uh. do it. But like his story is fucking amazing to me in terms of like having a, a real conviction and then just like walking the walk and not talking the talk, yes. you know, like he, and he's putting your head down and doing it. Dude, he's the best example of that. And like he worked at a fucking grocery store for, you know, like what, 10 years, maybe like, I don't yeah, know, maybe right. like five, yeah, six, seven maybe years. Like five. And it's like, there were so many people in his life that, were like probably friends with his like family that would be like dude you just work in a grocery store like when are you gonna yeah. get a real job like You're when are you gonna do this in a health food shop like cool man like, yeah it's yeah. a phase yep and then he just fucking stuck to his guns and he grinded it out and he grinded it out and he grinded it out like i don't even think he won a jiu-jitsu competition until he was like a purple belt or like a late yeah. blue belt i think he said i think he competed late too yeah yeah and it, so it's like you know he he had this goal as a white belt like walked into the gym was like i want to be a black belt and i want to own my own academy and then it's like he wasn't even good at it <laughs> like in a in a judgment sense of like yeah. going to a competition and winning like that's how you figure out if like where you're at you're good it's like he didn't even win till the end of his blue belt most people don't even make it to the end of their blue belt yes and then he just keeps going he keeps going now he's a purple belt national champion he's a brown belt national champion and he's just i'm pretty sure he just won uh well he's one at the at the black belt level now yeah and it's like he's a uh, now he owns his own gym and then when he owned his own gym and it was going good he still kept working and he still yes. like to me he's just the ultimate guy of like walking the fucking walk yeah and it's just i just respect the shit out of it yeah you know? and changing uh, proactively changing a lifestyle like he was overweight and, yeah he was you know, at the start huh? yeah like living a completely different life not when he came to flannery's but like before that fully changed that then obviously just adapted to this whole new lifestyle of jiu-jitsu and just compliment i feel like he manifested a lot of like the 100%. good things coming on board by being proactive it's like that cliche shit but like he was like i need to change my life um, I don't want to disclose his personal information, but that something happened to him. He was like, I need to change my life. He did it, walked his walk. Then as that journey continued, then he added on these things like jujitsu and things that uh, yeah. like, and this was back when jujitsu wasn't really that trendy nah, and yeah, stuff. Nah. So like, and I remember cause he was like, Oh, you do like MMA and stuff. And I was like, yeah, man, I was like, you do MMA. I was like, I was like, you do jujitsu. Like no one does jujitsu. Like, yeah, yeah. None of these other guys that work here know what we're talking about. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, and so it was just me and him would be able to talk about it at least. But I was just like, this was back when like, you know, it wasn't really like an average Joe thing to know about. Like the UFC wasn't like as like, yeah prominently yeah. exposed as what it is now and so it was just like yeah like that's cool that he found that and that complemented his journey perfectly to take him to the direction of whatever he needed he had a negative thing happen turned it into a positive and that manifested and dominoed in effect into where he is now and, and he's more humble than ever you know and it's like we we caught up like oh, a couple of weeks ago and it's just the same thing man like no matter how good our life is trending in any given direction. Like if you step back, like my life's going amazing. His life's going amazing. Guess what we both talked about? The ways that we wanted to be better. You know, like I'm trying to make, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to be a little bit better here. He's trying to be a little bit better there. And then we like, I leave those conversations with him just feeling like sparked up in my, in my day and my life. And I feel like, I feel super grateful for where I'm at because you know a guy like him he always acknowledges like you're doing so good bro blah 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 i feel grateful but then i also feel like humbled and then hungry i'm yeah. like dude i can do better like look at what he's doing you know like and the that's way like that, that thing that martial arts gives you the exposure to those demographics of people and you're surrounding yourself with a whole lot of people that dude, make you sure. want to be better like that and that's like my birthday was yesterday like we just said and it kind of like, it's like that weird reminder because, you know, the people message you. You don't like, if I like sat here and you're like, who are your friends? And I'd be like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then like your birthday happens exactly and you're like, oh, you're dude, saying. like there's so many. Like, yeah, <laughs> And yeah. it's like the instant friends, like you're saying, because I've trained with these people. These are not just like my friends anymore. These are like, you know, I've got family in different pockets of the world that put the effort in. Like, I think like even to this day. And like, yeah, it's different when you've got like an Instagram with followers and whatever. Some people are just messaging to get attention or get a reaction or whatever or get access or whatever. But 
in the general sense yeah Yeah. i know the people and the pretty much the majority of the people that messaged me yesterday um or like this or whatever it was were like people that i'm just like thank you like i'm so grateful that you took time out of your day to make sure that you wish me a happy birthday something so simple but nonetheless still takes effort still something that you could ignore like people have birthdays every year everyone's having birthdays in september because we're all christmas babies yeah and um and that kind of thing but you're still taking the time out because you value me in your life and i think that in itself comes from yeah like going through this mma journey going through traveling and being able to train with people and then making these connections with people that are successful or driven or motivated or also on that kind of self-growth self-awareness journey um then it just ends up you know cycling more self-awareness and self-growth for yourself because you're you're like constantly manifesting that positivity towards your your own kind of journey and like yeah just a birthday just reminds me of how many connections i've made over the world because one i have like something that i value as having a good energy and being a good person yeah and that has manifested me all these great connections and all these people that I know, like, you know, if I rocked up to random pockets of the world, even like somewhere that I don't go off, like Miami or something that I don't go often, or I've never been to Bali before, but I have friends over that, yeah. you know, would help me and connections that, because of the impacts that you've made along the way. And because we also get to share this language of martial arts, which is like sick. Yeah, no, I agree. Like speaking of Bali, I was there at the start of the year for like six weeks spent i pretty much trained every day at bali mma people that i'll be out of call for years and years and years like no. austin he's uh one of the like the coaches there fucking g day one i'm at that day i'm like you're my homie like yeah, we're friends. we're fucking <laughs> we are good like you are my people but uh yeah it's just it's got such a cool way of doing that and i think that there's definitely like people that could be dickheads and oh. be, be around the gym and be around. like there's still those people still they get doing, filtered out pretty yeah. quick but and i mean there might be like the rare one or two that that stay around but like yeah. on average man like if you go to a gym like most of those people that have been there a long time got some real skin in the game like you found out who the dickheads are and like yeah. they've pretty much left and you know who they are and you just don't associate and like every i feel like anything like any hobby any community of any oh, yeah. variety you're gonna have you know a few bad eggs but they kind of make the they also like make the environment as well like you kind of need them to yeah. just like reassure yourself like oh we're i don't want to be that guy fucked. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. You're a bit egotistical and narcissistic. I'm going to not be like you. Yeah. I'm going to hang out with these guys and I'm going to click with these guys and, you know, whatever. Where uh, So where are you at in jiu-jitsu at the moment? Have you been training much jiu-jitsu? Yeah. You're still loving it. When was the last time you yes. put the gi on? Did you oh, ever do that? I don't know about gis, but... Um. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a belt anymore? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I you do. You do? Actually, because I opened my wardrobe the other day and my friend was over and he was like, what are those? And I was like, gis. <laughs> I, like, I used to wear them. <laughs> I remember when I used to wear those, yeah. And like one of them's like the show your role Ruka one and oh, that's like, dope. I'm like, why do I not wear that two hundred dollar gi? But anyway, um especially because I actually took a gi over to San Diego with me, thinking, you know, they do a lot of jujitsu over here. And then I went to Tenth Planet like an idiot. Nah. Oh. <laughs> I was like, what am I doing with a gi? And then like everyone that I hung out with over there doesn't really do gi either. Mm. And then like the the best, but that's like, I'm obviously prominently no gi. I'm yeah, going to yeah, be yeah. forever no gi. I'm like a five-year blue belt. Like <laughs> I might <laughs> be too. a forever blue belt. <laughs> <laughs> Me but too. It's fine. I'm okay with that. I've accepted it in my journey. That's uh. fine. If someone pops out a purple belt, like definitely, but I'll be stoked. Jimmy? But at some point <laughs> I'm just, just one of these Jimmy I'm there all wait, the time wait, you keep getting tapped with triangles in fights alright it's fucking not happening alright yeah yeah true <laughs> that's fair and then <laughs> and then um yeah just I've been doing heaps of nogi but like coming back here with Jimmy again um like we have a little breakfast club me him and Jesse and like a couple other people we used to be Georgia and stuff as well but she um just moved up north and that kind of thing we had a little crew we rock up we do a whole bunch of stuff whether we like uh, looking at something off down his instructional or we just saw something on the weekend or like especially ADCC gave us a lot of inf- um kind of influence to work a few things but we have just been I feel like this is probably like the best 
Um, I mean, I really, I'm at the best developmental stage of my jujitsu game and I've become, um, a lot more connected to it. Yeah. I've always kind of had that love hate relationship with it. And I think I've said that to you before. Yeah. Like it's you're just, sort of just doing it cause you have to do it. Yeah. It's been a bit of a chore and especially out of all the facets that I have to do, like jujitsu would definitely be the one that I'm least motivated for, but obviously I've consistently done, just could have done better maybe and i think now i am doing better and i am concerned and even like um I, I said that to mill on tuesday in the last like week three different people have kind of said um how much they're enjoying how much i'm training even though you know like i'm not in camp or anything i don't even have anything on the horizon um i'm kind of at this weird limbo area but i'm just one thing i can control is training so yeah, i'm just gonna yeah. train i'm just gonna get better and i am getting better i'm like hitting like even i, like, I know a surprise jimmy the other day hitting something that i probably wouldn't have the older version less um kind of developed version would have hit like a like an inverted triangle kind of from not inverted but from the back yeah um that's what i hit a lot now which is like that's it. such a random thing for it to be my kind thing of thing yeah. yeah yeah um but i i am good on the back and um one of my fights i finished on the back and i didn't finish the rear naked and it burnt me so i had mm. worked my back control so much and so i'm good on the back but i sometimes people are a bit slippery to finish the rear naked so i was like what else can we do from here and that's now one of the things i'm adding to my repertoire so I, those those are just like little um indicators that i am developed a lot and i and nogi especially is just my bread and butter and i actually enjoy going in and doing it like i'll do the midday classes more than i'll do the midday striking classes um of jiu-jitsu so these kind of things i'm, I'm like really stoked about that that maybe is another positive of me coming back to the gold coast and having someone like jimmy um that i am so comfortable with and i i trust and i respect mm. his knowledge so much that i will you know kind of do whatever he says but he also has that ability to teach um, really open-minded um, to be like, uh, that could go wrong. That's true. Like if you ask a question, like a silly question in a sense, yeah. you could be like, yeah, that's true. That could go wrong. But, um, you know, this, this and this, or maybe I'll look into, I'll, I'll, he'll, he'll literally like learn something himself and then be like, I don't want to teach you yet. I just want to hit it a few times or keep working it in my roles. And then I'll come back to you once I've fully understood it and then I can teach it to you. Yeah. And yeah. Then, like having someone around like that, like that obviously understands jujitsu a lot better than I do. I, and I understand striking a lot better than he does. So I understand that there's like that difference in learning ca capabilities is just like my own resource basically to go learn yeah. something for me and then teach it to me in a way that I'm going to like understand it because I speak Jimmy and I know yeah, yeah, what he's yeah, going to yeah. say. So yeah. it's like, yeah, it's that's in itself been a blessing. He's one of the funnest people to train with. Best. Like one of the funnest people to roll with. Like, man, I love, there was a, a period, it was probably like through COVID really, where like the their like gyms were closed and like I just found myself training with him no time limit on you know no yeah. clock on and just like rolling and then the the pace like goes in these crazy and he won't stop waves. until you say oh yeah. can we grow a drink yeah yeah uh -huh. and that's that's what it was you know like you just do like these twenty minute half hour rolls dude is always down like if you like you walk I walk in in this right now we'd roll 100% yeah he'd like start busking towards you and you'd be like shit man yeah, <laughs> yeah, he'll, yeah. and he'll never say no yeah. and it will always be fun like yes. there's a he I think and safe yeah, and good yeah, yeah he's a really great example of of like what a black belt should and yeah. could be I reckon and he's been a black belt for so long now and you kind of forget like and he doesn't ever promote that in an egotistical way no, he never like all. like you wouldn't even know that he's a black belt and has been longer than like pretty much any of our other black belts in the gym maybe other than um the newest one that's just come with us but i forgot his name um and that kind of thing and you're just like and him going to adcc is funny because he, he went to adcc trials um and like i'll ride for jimmy like i don't like like he's he's a definitely also a different personality so it's not everyone's bread and butter like and maybe outside of the gym which is whatever like but he's so authentically himself so comfortable in himself and that's what i love about him and i've known him for a long time and he supported me through so much and then um so we go to adcc i'm ready to ride for my people georgia and were um, you at 80 like the vegas no no, no, no this was just the, the trials, trials in yeah, sydney yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah went down with them and i was like yeah of course i'm gonna watch you guys like this is massive especially now knowing how big the adcc event was gonna was, be yeah. and and was now so um went down and he's you know wearing a t-shirt and boardies <laughs> and i love it like mm. i was like this is the best like and um few people were like just saying stuff about it and like this like quite bigger guy um said something about it and i turn around and I'm like 
talking shit about my mate like and like um he was like oh like why is he wearing a t-shirt it's like getting and it was getting caught in the other guy's foot and blah 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 and i was like because he wants to yeah, like, yeah, yeah. i was like i'm ready to throw hands bro like say when like <laughs> yeah, yeah. like because jimmy is just like one of those guys that like one if you look back at the lineage of jiu-jitsu that's what they used to train in t-shirts and stuff if you're a fan of gorilla hands then you'll yeah, know, yeah, like you know yeah, that's yeah. the vibe like so there was other reasons where it's fine there's and something it's fun not an ADCC boy, there's something legitimately set. fun about training a shirt that was one thing i did in bali <laughs> mma all the time and i, I don't do know it. why it just fucking feels cool it feels cool i do it all the time like maybe but i'll tuck mine in because i always wear oversized tees yeah. i'll tuck mine in but like, especially if I'm not like not feeling super skinny or something at the moment, I just want to like roll comfortable. I'm gonna roll in a t-shirt, whatever. And, and like comps are obviously a different story, but ADCC doesn't have a like a, hey, exactly. a uniform thing. So roll in a t-shirt and some cool bodies, go for it, bro. I think it's great. Like, and if it was really um, hindering the the match in any way, then for sure they're probably just gonna take it off you. And yeah. Jimmy would have taken it off. No, no questions asked. He's not like argumentative about it or whatever. But like that's what he wants the chain and and like it just but it just was more about the fact that like anything that dude does i'll back it like 100 yeah, yeah. like i'll ride for that dude i'll ride for georgia like and like everyone knows that too and just and her subbing um Livia was amazing like oh really yeah she wow. was a knee bar i think no shit um so she got like that ain't seed. easy to she hit got the biggest seed in the first round like yeah. first round of draws um livia jars and you know obviously mentally that's a big feat knowing yeah. that you're gonna go to sydney and, and another think. epic human and she's like amazing but she does get in her head she has some self-doubt with with competition i think she just needs to compete more and you know you know feel the feel the feelings but then like navigate them in her own way um because she has the ability to be the best in the world absolutely hands down and um and so obviously we're just like, she was like, well, you know, like if I lose to her, it's not a big deal. But if I win, you know, then it's going to be good because then it's smooth sailing from there, blah, blah, blah. She knee bars her in like, a, I think it was like two minutes or something like that. And we're losing our mind, obviously. We're just like, and like, I, I love Livia Jasu. Like what a phenomenal yeah, pioneer the of the jujitsu yeah. and everything else and, and a great representative and everything else. But like that's my g like like <laughs> she like and i know how much she gets in her head about stuff so it wasn't even just about the sub it wasn't it was about like about her it was personal about, win too she believed in herself and you and she backed herself and that's what happens when she backs herself and yeah. like and then that like and she's a brown belt sub in a black belt and like just all these other little things and it was just like she could have won and then it just obviously she didn't end up winning the trials but um I can't even remember how she lost, but, um, but yeah, but it, it wasn't even really about that. Like that was the win that we took away from the day. And if sh she can take that confidence into every other thing or the next ADCC trials or whatever, then like, yeah, it would be amazing. So yeah, just good to see friends do well. And, um, yeah. especially in jujitsu, that's even more motivating for me. Yeah. Yeah. The, the jujitsu comps, like I, it's what gives me so much respect for you is because like in my own small way like the anxiety that is induced from doing just a fucking local jiu-jitsu tournament is so hectic <laughs> so like to amplify that to like I, I think you're probably right like you probably don't think about the physical consequences of fighting as much as because like jiu-jitsu still hurts yeah, like oh. it's it's no like i'm sore as fuck today yeah. <laughs> and i've got so many little injuries right now from rolling just much. rolling every yeah you roll every day i get, get less injuries up. and that's inspiring than rolling anyway. yeah so i don't think that jiu-jitsu like i guess you're not getting well nah, but dude even like fuck man like galev they do the fight nights at the at the academy oh yeah and it's like god damn some of the boys are get like shane last time he fought with hen and got like this mass did you see it on his fucking no? instagram oh like the biggest black eye from just like a head clash on a takedown so i mean jiu-jitsu is no joke physically so it's not like it's a step up what you're doing physically but i just think like the level like the stage that you're on hmm. and to be in that arena and to be with those fans and the tv and like the fucking media you've got to do and the photographs you got to do beforehand and it, like fuck that like seriously fuck that it's so hard just to do a local jiu-jitsu competition like it's funny because I think like if you asked a couple of other fighters, they'll say jujitsu com is actually worse what? for the anxiety. Why? Like I know that's so <laughs> crazy. Fuck? I think it's just because of the way the day of a jujitsu com is kind of set up, especially if it's like say like if I went to like Vegas, like actual ADCC Worlds or something. That would be a whole different story. Or even like West Coast or East Coast trials, they're like yeah. a whole two day thing. You got heaps of matches and all that sort of stuff. I just think like um, 
because it's like multiple things in a day and you and it's sort of unexpected as to when that time will be i think for us like and especially if you've done it a few maybe not if it's your first fight or your like first pro fight or whatever in in your early days but once you kind of get a groove on you're just like yeah i'll fight probably about 7 p.m i'll be out of there by eight eating food by nine we're in it like it's just like you like i don't know you're just like yeah it's another day like of course you still get anxiety you still get um you've just figured out how to yeah deal with it you, you're just navigating it a little bit differently and i think maybe yeah maybe if i had done heaps of jujitsu comps then i would have that same feeling about jujitsu comps because i don't do a lot of jujitsu comps i get to a jujitsu comp and i'm like fuck like how many matches do i have like yeah. what time is it Start what count. mat is it yeah. on like is that six or is that six like yeah. does it go one two three four five six or does it go one two three four five six like you just like god damn it like yeah. and you've reassured it like five times and you're like did i still get it wrong am i on the wrong mat like like just stuff like that like i think it's just made the, the same unknown. Day. yeah yeah and i i always just go kind of in open weights and jujitsu just because i'm like well there's not gonna be a lot of people bigger than me but um and it's just like stuff like that but it's just kind of different setups. Not, it's not my niche, you know, all that sort of stuff. So I think it's like, it's definitely the same in, in a lot of ways, but obviously you just don't have that exposure to the audience that we yeah. have. But yeah. that's the only difference. You're never going to get, or I, don't, I mean, ADCC, ADCC filled out 19,000, yeah. but yeah. Um, you're never going to get, yeah, the viewers on a, all jiu-jitsu, every single jiu-jitsu match as you will on one fight. You know, a fight yeah. night is four hours, maybe. Jiu-jitsu is two days worth of, and two days of like three people competing at a time so, yeah, you know, like yeah it's like technically two days times three in a sense for somebody else so yeah. it's like you're never going to have that many spectators looking at the one person all the time whereas we just have one cage one set time yeah yeah, it's yeah. a little bit different but man yeah. I, I think that the thing for me is like I, i've said it probably i've said it a bunch like i don't even really want to win i just don't want to fucking lose <laughs> <laughs> and like, I just want to look an idiot. I think. Yeah, like I just don't want all these people to like. I, I don't hate... get wrist locked. Um, I don't get toe holded. I don't want to get like buggy choked. I don't want to <laughs> get like something stupid. Like, yeah. It's not saying that those are not legitimate the submissions, but in a comp, like, come on, bro. Yeah, <laughs> do better. Be better. <laughs> Be better. <laughs> but yeah, just like I letting people down, like that feeling of like knowing that these people are like watching. That's my biggest thing and i just can't imagine like i i have no like uh fallacy in my mind there's nothing built up in my mind that i could be a fighter (laughs) like in no like in no way shape or form yeah 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 but like just to like prepare and plan and then be like righto at this day i'm going here and i'm i would be a fucking wreck (laughs) the the entire time like oh just it seems like a lot it just seems like and it, even for me, like when I book a fucking jujitsu comp, like uh, Worlds are on in Abu Dhabi in November, and I'm gonna be there. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, fuck, do I do it? And I'm like looking at the entry, it's like crazy anxiety. Like, fuck, dude, you suck so bad. Like, you haven't even booked this thing, and you're shitting your pants. <laughs> so, you don't even know if you're going. Yeah, you're exactly. It's like crazy, it. crazy fucking crazy anxiety. But without the anxiety, we wouldn't push ourselves to like not fail. As and well. that's so that's like, the that's thing. The like, fun part. That's where the juice is. And after you finish that comp, if you do it you're, you're gonna lose. think back yeah win or lose you're gonna be like fuck yeah i did that like, yeah. i did that yeah. no one can take that away from me no one can take that experience away from me like so that and that's the thing about yeah winning or losing in the cage like you know there's a 50 50 chance like you're gonna yeah. win or lose that's your only two options like there's no like third place or like you know maybe we'll come fifth out of ten like there's it's win or lose yeah. like first or second and second is shit like yeah. how <laughs> long how long did it take you to get your head around it you reckon because you've been in the game a while it's like what eight years ago was your first fight yeah um like the first ten. mma 10 fuck hectic hey yeah so hectic 18, still in the game still in the game still out here yeah, we are you hustling yeah <laughs> like yeah nine nine ten years ago um had my first amateur so um that's a career bro and it's yeah that's the crazy thing it happened so quick and that's what i said before like you don't realize it's the best years of your life until the best you're like oh shit it's a career like i remember i was always looking at all these other guys that had been in it for ages that had had like 10 20 fights or whatever i was like oh i can't wait to have like 10 20 fights i've only got like three and it's like um and then I, i i'm lucky that i did kind of forget about that um thing that i had that mindset that i had at the very beginning because then i was just like now i'm just enjoying the journey and i have enjoyed the journey i feel like i've been 
present enough throughout all the mm. great and good and bad things throughout my time rather than just being like i got to get to the gold 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 like keep pushing um but yeah it kind of happens real quick and you're just like whoa like and then someone says someone else says it and you're like yeah i have been here for a minute mm. hey like that is pretty crazy but um but it's it's cool like it is obviously also a cool feat but i, th- I and i in um to answer your question i don't think you ever get used to it mm. in a sense i think you just like have a better understanding of it yeah Yeah. you understand how the whole production works and these things and these bits and pieces and who's going to be standing here where when but you still got to ride the ride yeah and sometimes you lose that as well you kind of lose that confidence and then you got to pick it back up in some other way you maybe lose like a drive i remember like i was going through a hard time and i was really drawing from that and i didn't realize like i was really drawing from that hard time and that bad relationship to like win fights like which is crazy and then i Uh. am now at a point where i'm like really good like my life is good it's drama free like like some things could be better some things could be way worse though as well like kind of thing and i i kind of like not took away my passion but i was just like oh like i need to maybe not draw off that then i need to draw off something else. that's a real thing eh? It's like crazy, I, yeah. especially in right yeah i, I kind of know what you're talking about too now um yeah the in moto there's guys where like they need to pretty much be at like war with the industry yeah they need people like <laughs> hating on them they, yeah they, they need like that, that shit they haven't figured out how to win without that fire inside them and like they'd always win after they got dumped by a team and then they get on a new team and then they win and then they go like two or three years with that team and then they don't win anymore and then they fucking get done and then they win like that's uh that's actually like a cool thing for you to realize in the moment that like oh i'm fucking like i'm in this bad relationship because it's given me like a certain level of rage yeah that like i'm or like i just couldn't get out of it but i didn't also realize how i was drawing from it as well yep yep I also was doing badly as well. It's hard. It's hard because like I did, I did good in some, and then when the drama was way too much and it chipped into the performances because it was like, like fight night, like bad things are happening, which is obviously not what you want to do going into a fight, and then that takes away from the performance, and then I just was drained to get into the performance, and I was like, fuck, I don't have anything for this now. I've just been like drained yeah, by old done. mate. Like yeah. I, this is just That's too much. So like yeah, which is shit to look back on, but it's also you know you got to take responsibility for me putting myself in that situation and allowing him to you know be a a part of it. But and then like um, but it, it's funny even before that I had a like good relationship um, and it was something that my ex said when I was in that good relationship she was like do you think I like care about you too much that I'm like causing you to not be as good of a fighter and the fact that he even was self-aware enough to say that yeah um uh because I lost my Bellator I did I had my De- Bellator debut with him and he was lovely just very empathetic very caring very like very nurturing and the the energy that I needed at the time definitely but he in his mind was like maybe i'm too soft and i'm too like you know enabling yeah Yeah. and i'm not giving you and i was like no honestly this is a good balance right now i was like i lost because i lost like i was like it's my debut it was a lot i didn't know what's going on like we're out here in front of like 30k people 50 cents in the crowd i don't know what's happening i'm like well i literally went from fighting in hong kong to this i was like it's not on you but i appreciate you for like taking that in consideration because i have seen that happen with like um it's funny i had to speak I had a conversation actually with one of the guys who's like really high up in the UFC, one of my good friends. And um, he was like, oh, to a girl who just had a baby, I think it was, or she'd either just got into a relationship and she got pregnant. And he was like, what? She won't come back for a while. She might come back in in ages away, but she won't come back for a while. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you know, like he's the dude that scouts and does and signs people and match makes. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you know, she's loved. She's loved. She has everything she needs right now. Yeah. Why would you fight? And I was like, I know what you're talking about, but I don't want to agree. Like, cause I was in this like denial stage that like, cause I want so badly to have everything in my life, but I want so badly to be a world champion as well. Like, and that was at a, this was maybe like four or five years ago that I was having this conversation with him. And I was like, before I was in Bellator and all this sort of stuff. And I was like, maybe I can't have both. What if I can't have both? Uh, And I can't have both, but it just takes a lot of maturing, a lot of understanding, a lot of self awareness that like you taking responsibility for everything, every single thing, like, and drawing off the right things. And so, you know, you can go up and down, you can let your personal life affect it positively or negatively, but at the end of the day, you just got to 
take into consideration. Like, if I'm the best, I'm the best. I don't need a freaking bad relationship or a good relationship, good relationship to yeah, yeah. manifest that. I just need to be the best. Well, they're like, not in there with you. Yeah, exactly. So then it's all just about how you navigate all of that personal life. So it kind of goes up and up and down in waves. It's funny. There'd be it'd be a weird. Well, not weird. It'd be like a challenge to date a, a professional female fighter, I think. I think it'd take like a certain, like a special kind of dude. Um, and then a lot of times as well, like uh, like female fighters will probably end up dating fighters. And then there's there's like this weird, there would be a weird clash of like egos in a sense of like, if you're a male fighter, but your chick's the star... Like, how does that go down behind closed doors? Like, what do his mates tease him about? What it, Like, it would probably take a special dude to kind of be in that relation and, like, be solid in that situation. Like, I always I always think about Kerry Hart and Pink. So, like, Kerry Hart's a friend of mine. And, uh, and uh, whenever I'm around, like, him and Carmichael, who's, like, one of his mates... Dude, just ripping him like, oh, you came on Pink's helicopter. Oh, you came in Pink's car. Like, nice yeah, like, 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 yeah, <laughs> like full just rip. And he's like such a fucking G. He's the yeah. first dude that's ever backflipped the motorcycle. And he's like, on his own accord. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and he's like made his own money. He's like he's a fucking lord. That that tag just like stuck on him, you know. But for a, for a fighter, like he's made it in his life. Like he's yeah. good on his own. But you know, you'd see like a male fighter, or like you've got her like your chick's the UFC star and you're at like eternal or you know what I mean? It, there would be a lot that would kind of go into that. Then there's a lot of like training together and a lot of like you doing the weight cuts and like being around and like even for the, on your side, like knowing a dude, well, he can take a fucking hit. He's a fighter. So I can lay the shit on him. You know, like I imagine there's like a lot there to make it work. And then if you've got a dude that knows nothing about fighting, then it's like, does he know how to support you? In the moment? Yeah. It'd be a lot. It's, it's that everything it's like on the money everything you're saying like i've dated fighters and i've dated non-fighters and it's like both have their positives and negatives and it's like you just have to kind of be with someone that's no matter what they are and i was like oh i'm never dating a fighter ever again and then um and then i dated a non-fighter and i was like oh that doesn't work anyway and there's no like there's no one or the other there's just like if you're secure in yourself and you've like done your own self-worth yeah, and yeah. stuff like that kind of thing then that will affect every part of your relationship if you and it's not like people don't know what they're signing up for when they meet me it's like bro like i yeah. fight like that's you see a love block pretty much <laughs> pretty much the only like guaranteed thing is that there's going to be punch-ons like <laughs> i'm going to get paid for them but there's going to be punch-ons like yeah, yeah. in the gym or whatever like and it's just kind of like it is i think the idea of it sometimes intrigues people and they're that's like, probably that's true like too, a right? great idea yeah. and this is cool and it's glory and we can travel and blah, blah, blah. And that's great. And then they get in amongst it and they're in the shadows or whatever. And they're, you know, they're back on the back burner and they're on the behind, especially during the weeks. And then the funny thing is because my love language is caring and nurturing after people like the day to day, I'm given a lot. And then, but when it's like my week, like that's all I ask for is just like my week has, it has to be about me. Cause that means I'm going to have the best that's opportunity to win. Between, yeah. yeah winning and, and make money for us at the end of the day. Cause me casa su casa. Like it's always like, that's my ideal. Like I'm, I'm very, I dive in a little bit hard as well. And I'm one of those people I give a lot and I, you know, give my best like all the time. Um, and that's bit me in the ass and it's also being positive as well because like that's just how I am. But for that reason, um, I see it from a different perspective. I see it from like I care like I'm putting you first all the time. I'm like choosing you and us and this and um giving you the energy that you're asking for, but then maybe during I don't see from your perspective that during those weeks it must be hard to be in the shadows and be in the shadows of a masculine sport of something that you're meant to be good at in a, on the society's like expectations. So yeah. it's like, it's a whole different thing to navigate. And I understand that it's difficult. And for that reason, I've just, I've decided to be more selective myself. I've just yeah. decided to kind of make the decision for you. Like in a sense, yeah, like, yeah. cause like you may think it's a great idea, but like, I know if you've got what it takes or not to hang or yeah. if you don't, and if you don't, it's just going to cause us both heartache. Cause it's not going to work. Like, like, later on down the track or whatever so it's just like it just made me a little bit more um ha definitely have a bigger peripheral of yeah yeah the other things that you need to be around and like i because then it was like on my own 
like self-worth journey it was really hard for me to be like oh maybe i'm just like hard to love and i'm hard to be around i'm 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 not really meant to be happy kind of thing and you go through that journey and i'm just like no like you know like i know i deserve a lot from a single mom too like that probably plays in your mind as well like you've been kind of like abandoned in a sense as well so like having to go through you'd have like a lot of walls up in that sense and probably like a and you'd know like okay well this is like one possible end case yeah you know yeah and and because um not at her fault but because i didn't have a a strong like healthy relationship to like look towards as an example that made it and because i didn't have a male figure in my life other than all my coaches and the people that i'm very grateful for but um from a young age i didn't know what i was looking for in a sense so and i I think and because i am very um accepting of diversity and stuff like that and um because i dip in i play i'm a chameleon a lot and i dip into a lot of different yeah you got like a pretty wide range of interests yeah there's like a lot of people you can get along with yeah and for that reason and because you know like i didn't have a picket fence but i also you know don't sit here now trying to do anything like bad and that kind of thing but i dip into like both areas i'm friends with both people and yeah. that kind of thing and you know what it's like yeah. um but for that reason i've never really been that discriminatory against anyone and i can see i see past everyone i look for their inner child that's what yeah, i'm looking yeah. for at the end of the yeah. day i'm looking for like what your love language is and how you're going to give that love to me in a sense i'm not really looking of like i feel like this has been negative i wasn't always looking of like what car you drive and how much money you have yeah what's like the like nuts that. and bolts of this situation yeah, yeah which to an extent i should have yeah to be honest there was a, like a limit where i just let it go too far and i was just accepting everyone for how they were and that's how i like to be but there is also if you're going to hang with me then you do also have to have drive you do also have aspiration you do have to have like um pride in your appearance and all yeah. these other little things that are little but they do make a massive difference long term yeah. and so it's just like now i guess um kissing a few frogs has been positive again like the positive is that i now know what i'm after and i now know what it takes to kind of create a healthy life so and if it's anything less than that i don't really have time to yeah, waste like yeah. i'm not i'm not dating for anything other than like marriage and game like i'm not like you know i'm not here to fuck around and i don't i'm never in the same freaking city for long enough to do shit like that anyway yeah, so yeah. if you're on board it's going to be difficult like no matter where i am like even if you are from the gold coast i'll probably be gone like you know next week or whatever so yeah. it's always going to be like that extra these extra loopholes that i have to jump through and stuff like that so for that reason now it's just like I know what I want and I like if you're matching my energy then that's great but if you're giving me any less than what I deserve then no we're out of here like and that's like the guy I'm kind of seeing at the moment that's kind of like I think the up and down journey we've had and we also live in different spots and that's always hard and then um other things and baggage and all that sort of stuff we just like I'm just like look like and I tell him how it is all the time I'm like, yeah. like where's the energy like i'm a 10 like where's the energy like better be what it is because like i know i got your back but like you know yeah. we're just if you want to like if you want to make this work say the word but if you don't then like we can you know now yeah. get it how it is but and it's yeah. because i know what i want and i know that if you're in your own head about it and you're like oh maybe i'm like not you know um able to hang around all her fighter friends or whatever it is i don't know what i don't know what goes on behind the scenes but communication then just knowing that they can do that is the most important i think the the biggest thing i think it's just for any relationship but it's like i feel like the foundation of the work that you need to do as a person this is what i've really learned through my 20s is that you just need to like find out what you're insecure about yes and accept it like or fix it yeah like, both do both yeah but like well first, some stuff you can't no fix. don't don't deny it yeah yeah some stuff like you well you just are who you are and like and even for me that was like part of me and there's still parts of me where i'm like fuck you're a dickhead like you're <laughs> such a fucking loser bro yeah and it's like i have to be like okay with that guy and yeah. like i've sp- i spent a lot of my life like i actually had this chat with my brother coming back from the track the other day like i spent a really big part of my life like hating certain parts of my own personality and like who I am. And it's stuff like, I think it's one of the good things about doing like mushrooms and shit is I feel like it kind of takes you back to like the the roots of like, like where that come from. And then your ego out. Yeah. And you can be a little bit more objective and I feel like you can be a bit more kind to like those parts of you. So, you know, for me, there's like, there was certain things where 
it was like the way I would like talk about certain things, the way I'd say things, and I'm just like, oh, fucking gross, bro. Like, <laughs> but then when you like, I you go back and you can like, you look through the lens of with like context of your childhood and like the people that you're around and like the way that you grew up, and it's like. I'm like, man, I could kind of see the way that I was like pinballed into like being that guy. And it's like, it's not that bad. Like give yourself a break, like work on it over time, you know? So it's like you you zone in on these insecurities or if it's stuff that is in your control, like fix those fucking problems, like fix your situation. Like I, I, I had a thing, like a real big thing, like not coming from much money and like, having a real weird relationship to it where i thought that it was going to solve all my problems i thought i wanted to be mega rich i thought i had like a weird that's what was missing you thought that was the thing but then i didn't want it at the same like subconsciously Mm. it's almost like i did everything i could to like push it away yeah and and you stayed in like this weird kind of zone and almost like uh almost like living like i wanted to just hold on to like the potential i didn't want to actually get there because if I got there and it wasn't what I wanted, then like I'd be fucked. Yeah. So it was almost like you just stay living in this like, it's like this uncomfortable comfort zone in a sense. But so anyway, it's just like really drill down into like, what are you insecure about? Like, what yeah. do you don't, what don't you like and about yourself? What that, don't you like, like about your negative self-talk like yeah. that? Like, cause I used to think, I used to think it wasn't humble to be like, I'm a 10 or I'm worth more or whatever. And yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think that came from anything specific. I think that it does come from like a New Zealand culture of tall poppy syndrome a little bit and yeah. like, don't shine too bright, like calm the fuck down and like humble yourself. But then when you're in the limelight of this and you've got attention on you and stuff like that, you're kind of like, I am the shit. But you, <laughs> yeah, then it's yeah. like an egotistical point of view. So that's yeah. like a different thing. And then so the, then I found this like middle ground where I was like, no, I just like, I am fucked up and I've got dumb stuff that I do. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I talk too much or I like, you know, care too much. And I like sometimes smother people or whatever or whatever it is like, and then I, my friends will hear me say that and they'll be like, what? Like, you don't, you're like the worst person to reply, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so there's yeah, like this yeah, middle yeah. ground where I just have my faults, but I've accepted them and I know where they came from. I've literally dived deep into being like, oh yeah, this came from this. I just need to like understand it, consciously work at it, but it's not going to happen overnight. I might still muck up every now and again and be like, oh, like I can see myself doing that or I can see myself being socially awkward or yeah, whatever yeah, it is, like, yeah. and not dealing with my anxiety or insecurities and uncomfortableness and about in a good way and but i'm like i'm okay with it like and it's such a you hear people talking about that too and you're just like that doesn't make sense how do you get okay with it and and then you well you realize there's stuff that you just can't control like there's just certain like you are you you know what i mean and what am i gonna do get another skin suit like i don't have a choice like bro so how about i just like we said just be proactive and work on it let you feel your feelings and then and also be so aware about it that when it happens and someone like say you're in a romantic relationship and someone pulls you up on it you can be like yeah no i actually do agree with you (laughs) i know that happens all the time (laughs) yeah Yeah, that's correct i it came from this and also maybe i do try to fix it but i'm not always right all the time i'm always killing it so maybe just um help me like yeah. that should be what it's about help me love help love me in a way that's going to support me yeah. in being the be- that better version of myself i'm not saying that it's not my fault i'm just saying like there is ways that you could cope with it as well that could also aid us both and hopefully eventually we won't have to deal with this issue but like at the end of the day like that's just something that you're going to have to accept and once you're aware about it like what are you going to do like there's something that my mom says something that i say all the time like you can't like get angry at the truth sometimes like you yeah. you really can't like yeah. you can be angry at each other and be arguing about nothing after a little time but you can just be like yeah no nah, i fucked up like <laughs> like well that's like the way that all like you could have a fight for four days in a relationship and that's where it's gonna get to like at some point like if you don't break up someone's gonna give in mm. like someone will go because someone's wrong yeah and someone's maybe more wrong someone's maybe less wrong you know but at some point to clear up any kind of like drama or fight in a relationship someone has to be wrong so it's like let's just get there now yeah like who you know and and that does come pushing your ego aside that exactly that comes to you just being like super objective listen to that advice for your mom and be like yeah well being in arguments 
Yeah. <laughs> comes from being in arguments and then being like midway through the argument and in my head being like, what am I doing? Like, so fucking wrong here. I'm yeah. I'm so wrong and I'm still arguing. Like why like why are you doing that? Because your ego. Yeah. And then like going back to like, yeah, hallucinogenics, mushrooms and substances that you can use as resources. Like um, there's people that obviously abuse them. But what I've found with even like LSD and stuff, doing it by myself, like people like you did it by yourself. And I was like, yeah. That's the only way to do it. I was it. like, yeah. that's the best way. Use <laughs> yeah. it as a resource because it strips your ego all the way down and then you're literally just like why did i get angry about that why did i do this about this why didn't i apologize to this person why it's so crazy all these it's euphoric so it keeps you in a positive mindset which is good as, as long as you're kind of navigating in your the right space yeah in yeah. the right space but um it's so you're you're coming from a place of love like the intention is always going to be positive and at the end of the day the intention is important i remember there's a book called uh, 12 rules of power or whatever it is oh uh, yeah and it's yeah. like the intention is not important if this is what the fault is and i like heavily disagree i think intention is everything intention yeah. is whatever you're putting completely. out into this yeah. universe you know and you can f have good intentions and fuck up all the time and of course that means it's now your responsibility to fix the fuck up it may be your fault fault and responsibility of those two things that coincide it doesn't matter whose fault it is now your responsibility and that's like a whole thing in itself but at the end of the day, if your intention was positive and you meant well, then that means the next time you do it, you're going to mean well, but you're just going to learn off the failure that you fucked up before yeah. or whatever happened. So if your intention is pure and you can put your ego aside like 90% of the time, it's going to be so much more positive in your yeah. life. You're going to have so much better quality of life. I agree. Hey, this might sound real fucking weird, but <laughs> I think intentions, <laughs> right? So this is where, this is my like argument for intent. Intentions matter more than anything. Yeah. You can say a real nice thing to a person and hate their fucking guts you can say a real fucked up thing to a person and you can love that person so much like if you know a person's intentions right and so i think the most like extreme version not most extreme but like an extreme version of this for me to like i guess prove this point i'm singing along to every rap song and i'm saying the n-word bro and i don't give a fuck right i love rap music yeah black people make rap music and they say the n-word a lot and it's in the song and i'm fucking and singing song. and i'm singing along because that's my fucking shit there is not one part of me that has any negative or malicious intent that word i'm using that word in the context that they are using that word and it's like to me that is like i guess that's my argument for intent yes. i can say that, that perfect argument i can say that fucking word 30 times in a song mm. with nothing but love and reverence and like i want to be asap rocky you I know what guarantee i guarantee mean? the people arguing the ladder if they were by themselves in a car and no one was around them no one could hear them they're also singing that song but if people are in the car around them then they're not singing the song and so that's just means the only thing that changes the environment the people that are judging you on your decisions yeah at the end of the day your intention was pure yeah like, yeah so that that to me is always my example that i yeah. go back to like, yeah and i've got fucking black friends and like we say shit you know what i mean and it's yeah. like and this is in america this isn't yeah. even like yeah. aussie yeah. black yeah. friends yeah. where it's like that's not Different. the words not even the context yeah but so it's like that to me i think is a, a real clear example of like how an intention really really matters yeah and i think that if if you ever want to like it's like you come at me with that you know in a sense i just don't think i could change my my opinion on it and there would be people that would like disagree with that opinion but guess what i can go back to my intentions yeah like you might disagree that like oh man you really shouldn't sing that like part of the song mm. and it's like fuck you know what maybe you're right but yeah. i know exactly where i'm at on this like you can't ride these internals like i'm riding these internals i'm riding the feeling like i'm i'm on the intention like this is yeah. my thing so it's like i i get what you're saying and that might be your opinion but i can tell you the intentions and people. that's where it comes positive because you're having a conversation about it at the end of the day you're not this, this fucking cancel culture bullshit it's like no you can't sing that you can't do that and you're coming but, out in but an did aggressive you see way kendrick lamar bought that chick on stage it, it like really fucking like kind of hurt me when i saw this because he brings this chick on stage and then she did the same thing she started rapping the words and he just canceled her on stage like tore her up and i was just like and he brung her i can't remember um I can't remember the song exactly, but literally the intro to the song 
is like the N word is the rhyming word of the like the entire fucking yeah. intro of the song. So like in my eyes, I'm like, damn, you really fucking set this chick up. Like yeah. she has your CDs, she streams your music, Massive she fan. paid hundreds of dollars to come and see you, and now she's singing your song on your stage because she loves you. And so like that, and you think her intention is intention against is her. The N-word. Yeah, well, yeah, and like your. How does almost, that like even coincide? You yeah. know, like. You can say her intention is to support you and support music and Every, support African American music and yep. like culture and the rap yep. industry and all these other things. You cannot say that now her intention because she said one word that's in your song that she didn't write. Yeah, she didn't write the song. That means the other the rest of the words in the whole song. She means all of those words as well because she didn't write it. Yeah, does that mean she's gonna kill someone? Does that yeah. mean like should we yeah. take? Should we? She says Glock or like yep. should we be scared that, that she's like concealed carrying? Is like what's, yeah, what's yeah, happening? Yeah, like yeah. you know like how but, far are we going with it yeah so that that That's to me it. like i always think like and and i always try and judge people based off like their intentions like that's yeah. what i'll try and read i'll try and read like what did he mean by that like mm. and not not what did he say not what did he do because that shit can be convoluted at times and you know? it can like go the other me- way too like as in you can see past someone's like and words you, and you can have a person oh, that would yeah, be like oh i would never i'd never say the n-word ever be racist as fuck and do racist shit but like i do have black friends you're like oh god like yeah, yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. worse than saying the n-word like, do you understand <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah, or yeah. whatever it is so it's just like it's funny how that happens but yeah so i think that it, intentions are the things that, that you need to look for in people and hold you know? on to hold on to your moral compass and then just if someone put if you fuck up and someone pulls you up just be like hey you're probably right but like i didn't mean to yeah. and i know that doesn't mean anything but next time i will do better and this is my like pathway to do that these are the these are the actions and the steps i'm going to take to do so but yeah. I, ex- I i respect you pulling me up on it and at the end of the day you should like surround yourself not with yes men and with people oh, that are going to pull yeah. you up on things that you need to be criticized on so yeah it's just like as long as you can always accept like yeah whatever it is then and your intentions are pure those two things kind of coincide i agree yeah. hey what did you take out of adcc that was a dope dope oh thing for grappling like it was so much unbelievable man there's so many, like, and I, like, I'm, like, we've had a conversation about, I don't always watch jujitsu. I was invested yeah, in ADCC two days straight. Yeah. I was, I didn't wake up at 4 a.m. There's no way. My uh, my friends invited me and I was like, no, nah, it's not going to happen. We ain't doing but, this. <laughs> but I'll watch the replay on Fellow Grappling because yeah. I've got the year, <laughs> year-long subscription. Wait, whoever's got my fucking Flow subscription, I was logged out of that bitch <gasps> so many times and, like, no one fucking messaged me to be like... Oh, oh hey bro it's me and i was like who the fuck has this and it's ejecting me i like changed the password didn't work because they stayed logged in my oh, account i was like, you mother, like motherfuckers that's hilarious but after and you know after who was day making one, a shit ton of money on the weekend flow oh, grappling bro God damn. they suck you into a year-long membership that bro, is like, hectic that almost that almost feels like i mean i pay for it anyway but i was just like for for all the one-time fans like so gordon goes on rogan and Mo is on Rogan, and then they're like, s- like sending people to that event. How many more people would have watched it if it was just a one-time like UFC yeah. pay per view? Yeah, and you could just get get flow for the weekend. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly what they did. It is smart. Is it whoever's? It's smart, but it's cunty, like super <laughs> fucking cunty. It's like if you really cared about like growing jujitsu. That was the event where it's like, just make it like forty nine bucks. Make it like a USC pay per view. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, um. Uh, this time last year, I was living in San Diego, and one of my roommates was in the ADCC on the weekend. But um, he was competing. Who's that? In, uh, PJ Barge. Oh, sick. Um, in the seventy-seven kilos. Yep. Um, beat JT Torres. That was gnarly, like, dude. That was insane. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Anyway, um, so he was doing some comp. I think it was Nogi Worlds or it was ADCC Trials, one or the other. And I was like, what's it on? Like, I was like, what are we going to watch it on? Like, while well, we're back in San Diego when you're gone. Um, and I'm pretty sure, like, our other roommate, Alima, had the prescri- subscription. But I was like, oh, I just want to watch it on my phone or whatever. So, I got Flow Grappling. And I was like, they just charged me for a year. And he was like, oh, yeah, my dad's done that before. And he just has, like, emailed or called up and they just, like, refunded it. Never got the refund. I never no. even really, like, got through to them. And so, that was a year ago. And lucky ADCC, the best ADCC of just fell, just in the fell into yeah, that yeah, year. Yeah. Otherwise, I would be burning. But between 
West Coast Trials, East Coast Trials, and ADCC, I don't think I've ever used it for anything else. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so that's like a hundred and something dollars or it's whatever. Like for, bucks yeah, or yeah, for three events, which I could have probably like pirated or used someone else's like yeah, account. Yeah, yeah, But anyway. It was you. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. No, I paid for it, unfortunately. Uh, I'm still stuck. I think I've got I'll another like, I've got like a na- list of names, like not Janae. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check that one <laughs> off. All right, we can go down the list. That's hilarious. But... um at least i got to watch it and it's funny Amazing like we were like event. walking into the gym like all of us would be on our phone walking into the gym and i'd be like what matter are you watching like yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. and it'd be like man i'd be like and then like the absolutes and stuff so d- definitely like yeah one of the highlights pj barch beaching beating jt torres yeah one of the other highlights in that was also the fact that jt torres nasal breeze pretty much all of his matches so that's just set a fire in my life that i'm like i want to be at the level of fox dope, that he gives dope. please because i don't know how you can even do that yeah. you're in adcc you're in like 15 minute matches or like finals i never minute. picked that up how did you pick that up like do you, um, you just, we just it was, talk about it it was obvious that he was just nasal breathing the whole time um yeah and we were all just discussing it you know like while we're watching at the gym we're all just talking about different stuff i think butchies maybe brought it up and i was just oh, like okay, of course uh, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, nasal yeah. Breathing king. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um and, and then i was just like holy shit i was like he is i was like that's fucking wild like this dude's not even breaking a sweat um two-time adcc champion and then yeah pj box gets invited like um because i obviously follow his journey because i'm friends with him um his west coast and east coast trials didn't go his way and they were also a bit questionable so like some of the decisions and stuff like that um it was unfortunate and definitely I know took him took it out of him and he gets invited to the the world which is amazing I think and I well deserved I don't think it was like anyone well, he was proved, questioned he proved it yes. too yeah and then so to come in as an invitational take like, out the two time and then champ. take out the two time champ like when he won like his other matches as well lost like I think the semis or something like that um Either way, phenomenal performance for his first ADCC Worlds and taking out the champ. That was massive with a beautiful double leg. Crazy. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, definitely some of the open weights um, and some of the positions that we've been doing. Fee on error. Fee on error. Fuck, That's she's, like, she's so good, man. She's so good. It's crazy. And she just seems like the most... Like, I follow her on Instagram and she follows me back. Lovely. I remember the day Lovely. she followed me back. I was like, I've made it. I've made yeah, it. Yeah, like, for real. That was like, I think maybe after like one of the Nogi Worlds or something and she won the Absolute or something. Something crazy. She'd done something. And I was like, she followed me back. She's a and fucking G, bro. She's amazing. I love like, her jiu-jitsu too. If there's a inspirational account that you need to follow for female jiu-jitsu or just jiu-jitsu in general Pull her up, it's Griff. beyond error yeah and um even like i think the other day maybe it was like two How days ago spell it last name? Go F-I- so it's, i think it's f-f-i-o-n yeah there we go um bang yep she's on welsh i believe yep yep um and so if you scroll down a just little the bit picture of positivity <clears throat> this picture down there in the black and white uh to um, the, yeah yeah she uh yeah look when you used to be terrified no men would ever want to learn from you and making and now you make and making a living out of seminars and jiu-jitsu would be impossible thank you everyone who attended this is the coolest thing ever and it's a fuck ton of people a fuck men ton of dudes and women learning off her and she is this tiny like she's under 60 ki- i don't know what she weighs right at the moment but obviously she's in the under 60 kilogram division at adcc of jiu-jitsu she's won absolute divisions before which yeah. is very unlikely to do as a smaller athlete especially a smaller female especially with the people that are in the absolute divisions like gabby and all that sort of stuff um and she, she's won gi worlds no gi worlds she's won adcc, ADCC and um she just seems like a really humble person and to say that and just to like write that and you can even look at the like comments and stuff she trains with jt torres too so she's with a oh, phenomenal she went and team did her camp there this yeah time, i think right? she comes yeah. in and out of essential or whatever it yeah, is yeah um and so that's kind of cool but just like she just always like humbles me by like watching I her agree. accounts and yeah. just like just saying like simple stuff like that like these are stuff that all of us go through in the journey all of us think and she puts it she put where's her heart on her sleeve and puts it out there and i'm just like fuck yeah that's amazing like to think that there was a time where jujitsu 
females really were just like the kids class instructors yeah and it's fucked like it's i think that's like ridiculous like some of the black belts are like kids class instructors and like yeah. not saying kids classes aren't important but you know make them just teach a normal class not a woman's only class a normal fucking advanced class yeah because that's what their knowledge is comprised of yeah to yeah. be able to teach everyone else and it's sort of like people like her and a lot of other like um, there's so many amazing well, you can put live in that same yes. category as well yep. like i remember when i first, literally i've been doing jujitsu five months and i went to live in Lockie's camp in thailand and i was just so blown away by her and and seeing the like the way she just fucked me up like which is rad as well like when you can just get completely destroyed by like a 48 kilo chick yeah um but watching the way that because i was with them pretty much we ate dinner like we ate every meal together like we were hanging and seeing that like she's getting tested every single day in the gym because she's a girl and she's small and she's not as strong and there's like big guys and strong guys that are trying to beat her and it's like just the the level that she uh like the level of humility and the level of integrity and the le- like the attitude that she had to kind of like carry just daily in her jiu-jitsu i was like that's a whole nother layer that you've got like it's hard i think it's hard yeah and it's like and there's this whole other layer and like people like that you know that they've just broken down barriers over and over and over again and had to deal with the crew comments or just the insensitive comments of just like oh like don't hurt me and just all these things that people think are so funny and like respectful whatever and you get into the gym and then you go to roll with them they're like oh don't you're gonna smash me and you're like that's patronizing because you're now saying that i'm going to surprise you if i do smash you basically that's what your intent like saying behind that and it's just like people like this have persevered through that multiple 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 times and over and over again proved people wrong like no i will smash you because i'm really fucking good and people like this are the reason like that they've paved the way for other girls that are now going to get respected as jiu-jitsu coach they're going to sell instructionals they're going to teach seminars they're going to make a living out of jiu-jitsu because they're just as good as the guys they just compete against a different group of people and they're a little bit smaller but it's the same thing and I, i just think like that's like you know from dealing with it firsthand that how many like barriers that they face and then they just take it in their stride and people like Livia, people like Fion just yeah. like are great representatives. They never get angry. They never get upset. At, like she could kind of even like change that caption to be like, oh, when men, you know, used yeah, to she, like yeah, never yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. want to learn anything off me or whatever. No, she, she her self-awareness yeah. and her hum- humility tells her that when you didn't think that you could do it, yeah. but I believe that I could and I did. Yeah, and no, I right. completely agree. Right. Go back to a, go out of this. I just want to let's find some clips. Has she got any fucking cool clips? Go to this oh, the f- video. The and real. She's on flow grappling a lot too, so they're probably. Oh, oh no, she does a lot of. Maybe go on a flow grappling. Oh. I reckon. Um, I don't know if we do the logins. Yeah, just. Oh no, like on the Instagram. Oh yeah. Heaps of go to like one. Oh, go to these ones. Yeah, yeah, let's go to that one, dude. How's the view she's getting too? Hey. Eh? Yeah. Gee. Man. Because it's yeah, that's it. It's like a flow collab. Yeah, post. there you go. Her technique. That and was like the last the, three seconds. I think. The way she moves her body, like she's so gritty, man. Yeah. Like she just is a fighter. Like she I grinds just. Oh, I she's love had it. MMA fights too. Oh, has so she? Sure she's two and zero. Oh. Really? In MFA. I'll do some different because I'm actually really enjoying it. Watching. Um, it's uh, so sick. Go but go out of that one. Go into another one. She's so like, go to the sick. Yeah, go to that 6'11. I fucking knew it. Yeah, that's when she won. And she was like limping off for the finals. Oh, so that's not the finals because for the actual finals, she was limping off. Go out of that roof. Let's see what else it is. Go. Oh, and I remember going to that 54, yeah. She's 1-0. Oh, oh and wait. Four, she must have had three amateurs, though. So she's four. Lately, I've been focusing less on That's right. This was at... Um, she's a fucking I savage, man, eh? Hey? She's insane. The I think it's one of the, like, awesome things um, about jiu-jitsu, and especially, like, women's jiu-jitsu. If you're a, like... If you're a good... Like, if you're a female black belt and you're, like, a black belt competitor, your technique is just razor 
razor sharp because you have to make that shit work on fucking big dudes. And even a dude that's the same size as a chick is stronger yeah. than a chick. It just is what it is. Yeah. So, like, for, for a woman that goes into the gym, the majority of your roles are going to be men and you are going to have to be laser fucking sharp to even get one sweep yeah. you know to stay yeah. on top at all like you've just got to be a fucking animal you can't and turn off no. like at any point you can't like take a little bit of pressure off or you can't like you know m- shift your weight in a way that's going to get like rolled in a yeah. second you know like and i think like for um when when you're watching adcc and when you see the smaller weights they the movement is a lot fast like the scrambles are like boom 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 and then maybe a quick like pause and then like the bigger guys even Galvao and um gordon ryan like it's slower it's like i'm holding that yeah control. it's I'm more just isometric like, because I know the strength gonna, is there yeah i know it's gonna happen but i'm just waiting for it whereas like you can create um i think because they are smaller but they're still quite strong like you can create more scrambles and quicker yep. like yep. exchanges yeah, it's like is, featherweight yeah. flights as, as well i guess huh? yeah it's a different pace but like seeing that in jiu-jitsu was really cool too and then just seeing like the guys that were being successful in their games and like i mean like Cade Rotolo, like dude oh, when are they gonna do MMA can you imagine how big where do you go from here though you've just broken two records you're go to Re- go to Rotolo brothers and get off your phone um go to Rotolo brothers on Instagram uh how do you spell I think I it's R-U R-U, R-U, yeah. R-U yeah Ruo or something I think it's R-U yeah, yeah there you go bang so you win ADCC, 18 years oh, old. Gangsters. Youngest all ever to win. All of them are subs. subs. Like, so you're better than anyone that's ever won. Yeah. And Man, you're 18. <laughs> like, I think that... Um, in the, like, that's literally sense. what that says. Is like, ever anyone that's ever won this... Not as well, good. Has anyone ever won all... I'm pretty sure it was... I'm pretty sure someone... I read somewhere that it was the first person to win all subs to to, to a go, ADCC gold. Fuck, dude. That is so... I might be wrong, but I'm pretty so sure. So hectic. Like, and then... So, you got Cade that wins the division and then you got Ty that just has a real crack at the, absolute, at the absolute. Well. Yeah. Like, fought Penna, beat Penna, then fought Marigali. Like, Jesus. Imagine fighting the guy that just fought Gordon Ryan and beating him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like obviously, Gordon Ryan technically beat him, but it's because he quit. Yeah. But it's like, that's, Gordon Ryan's freaking huge. Yeah. And so is Felipe Pena. But you're just like, yeah, I'm good. I, I'm 18, I'm good. Like, I, I, I want to know, like, I wonder what they, um, I wonder, like, what they do. Oh, dude, they're refed by the family. Huh, that's interesting. Um, Who's that? Uh, it's like... Uh, Steve Astafin is he was like a real big motocross agent like mm-hmm. massive like not motocross he did like Ryan Sheckler mm-hmm. a, a bunch of the big moto dudes like he's massive he was at Wasserman Group I don't know if you've ever heard of them no. they're like a big marketing agency mm-hmm. but um, he like split off and started one called The Family so yeah that's great they're they're in followed by Bellator MMA Marcelo Garcia yeah, Nicky yeah, Ryan yeah. just like the best people yeah literally all the cool guns <laughs> uh, but yeah I wonder like because, dude, have you seen the videos of them just, like, fighting each other? Like, they'll just argue know. and fight. Oh. Have you ever seen that? No, but then, I mean, they closed out worlds. That's right. With a full-on war, too, man. Gangsters. Holy, this is so gnarly. And it was, like, so I think one of them said something like, oh, if he wins one, like, if he wins, like, three days in a row, I'm getting up early that day. I'm taking my electrolytes. I've got my, like, pre-workout. I've got shit going and I'm winning. Like, and so it's just, like, I think they just, you know. Level, 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 level. level. Cause, yeah. um yeah, so Ty... Was the one that won the worlds, and then Cade's the one that won ADCC. So they've both like technically won one each. Like, That's so insane. Which is insane. Like, yeah. But there's there's video like Flo will go and do like they're hanging with the Rotolo brothers, and they're punching yeah. on. Like Gorilla Hands is like trying to break him up. He's like, right, well, no, I'll just you've only fought for five minutes. I'll set one round, and they're like legit fucking buggy chokes, slam on the bed, like Ooh. full brawl. Like they know how to fight, wow. and they don't give a fuck. Yeah, like, and they're not Brazilian. Hey, they're like no San Diego, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ameri- like, and I, I don't know about why, but a lot of people think that they are. And I'm yeah, just like, yeah, yeah. Like, which makes it even, I think, just even more interesting for yeah. you to be that dominant in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or Jiu Jitsu in general. And just like not be from Brazil and yeah. like be eighteen and stuff like that. Like you, you would expect these kid stars to come from like 
somewhere. I yeah. was really excited for him versus Mika, and he fucked oh, Mika yeah. up. Yeah. Like, Mi- dude, Mika has been killing everybody, and like, where his- do they go from here? MMA. Like, dude. I think they were doing that one FC thing, right? It's oh yeah, so these oh. already fought in one. Yeah. Ipono Cafe. Have you been to Ipono? No. Nah. <gasps> What are you doing? Is that in San Diego? It's in Costa Mesa. Oh, is it? Yeah. Right next to your thing. Go, go. Shout out click to into Ipono. that. Click Chef Ipono. It's the best. It's like the most authentic Hawaiian food. That's the chef there. No shit. Your boy, he does jiu-jitsu, brown belt. No shit. Um, really awesome dude. Black belt chicken wings. There you go. <laughs> and um, all this is like proper. Um, that is Hawaiian as fuck. Hawaiian, right but it tastes pro- like there's a lot of people trying to do Hawaiian in California, but they're not always killing it. That wasn't that much of a thing when I was there. Oh, really? No, nah, no. Well, really. even it's like the only place I really know in Costa. But like even like living with Hawaiians, we would we would drive, drive up there to for Ipono, that. Yeah. Which is closed on a Tuesday, which is the only negative Fuck thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but nah, best best spot. It's like um like right around the corner from Ruka. Yeah, right. And uh sidecar donuts. That place is so legit. So it's next to that pretty much. Wait, on the right it's or like on the left? Across the Sorry, confusing. So side cars like there, and then you go like through the car park and kind of down a little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. like down the end. Is there still the pie shop next to sidecar? Um, I think so. It's an ice cream place now. Actually, uh, I think it's a homemade ice cream place. There used to be a pie shop that was there. Yeah, I can't remember. What, I think it was called Pie Knot. And uh, yeah, so I used to drive to there to have a pie all the time. So like, it's literally you have side. Like if you walk into sidecar, yeah, it's on the left. Yeah. So yeah, we used to just go like surf, and then yeah. we'd, we'd stop and get a pie. It was actually pretty legit too. That's pretty cool. Full Aussies. Did you go to the it. um, what's that place um just past like a uh, Costa Mesa, and it's called like the the bench or the something? Everyone waits till like five p.m. when there's um lifeguards jump off, and you can surf it. Oh, the uh, the wedge. Wedge. Nah, nah, it. that wasn't that wasn't for me. <laughs> Place is fucking psycho. <laughs> that looks. Have you insane. ever seen that, Griff? Go beach. to YouTube <clears throat> and type in the wedge Newport Beach. It's fucking out of control. So they you, wait till like the lifeguards are off duty because they won't let them surf it because it's fucking off. It's tap. so hectic. And then everyone just starts jumping yeah. it. It gets to like four fifty and you just see all these little brothers cruising like or just California. Look at this shit. No, thank you. It just fucking. <laughs> this is like on the beach. Like there's like barely any waves. Like right here is like rocks though. Like it's like. Yeah, fast. Forward. So. It comes. There's like this big break wall, and it like oh that yeah. There's all those rocks and yeah, stuff. <laughs> yeah, and it just like washes up off the beach. So you get like this crazy like the wave comes in, the wave goes out, and it just goes yeah. <laughs> it is fucking out of control. <laughs> so yeah, you die. We, we used to go watch the other. I don't know. I, never I watched s- ones. Yeah, but that was it. I never. One of um, Alima's like crazy friends jumped in. I was like, you gonna go in there? <laughs> yeah, it's just not. Funny. Are you gonna come back? Can well, I just would have broke my surfboard. I just knew one hundred percent I would have broke my surfboard. Because it's not a big bank, like from where the no, that's on is. the beach. It's like pretty much on the shore, like which is crazy. Go to Google Images and then um, try. You just like this, you can't really tell. It just kind of looks like any other. No, nah, go to Google Images. And then go to the wedge, and then you should get a pullback view. Yeah, bang. And then go, yeah. So, like, to see... Yeah, go to, the, like, that one up there. Yeah, we are. Left. Yeah, that one. Yeah, like, it just sucks up right off there. It's fucking ridiculous. It's crazy. Yeah, and look at, like, the rocks are just there. And then behind that is just, like, kind of like that canal thing. Yeah, and, and it's, it's just, just all like, calm and chilling. Yeah, and you're like, what the hell? There's heaps of people out there. Yeah, I wonder. I, I wonder if uh, the Rotolo brothers MMA is like the next thing that, that they do because man, they can scrap. They like. Yeah. They, they love to fight because I think that's probably the thing that you really need to be a fighter is like, like you could technically be the best fighter in the world, but if you don't want to like be in a fight. Like, you're probably going to struggle to be a fighter, you know? You just got to have that grunt. Like, you definitely have to, like, be a gamer. Yeah. And, like, that's... Like, you can't teach the heart part. Like, the heart part's, like, hard. Like, it's, like... um, I've seen so many great martial artists that are technically sound and really positive. And then they get... Maybe... Maybe they get to... Like, they... 
they're not very good at scrapping like and biting down on the mouth guard, mouth guard in the like rounds and stuff or then there's that other aspect of those people who aren't very good at competition like just yeah. the pressure of competition maybe they're really good street fighters but not very good at competition so those are two things that i think people don't value or don't um always know that like is like probably the most important like i can if this if i can get like someone who's got massive ticker and um just is is a gamer i'm ready to go then you know i can teach them technique you know yeah, I, yeah. I could do all fill in all the other gaps if you have all the technique in the world and you don't have the gamer stuff you got nothing like yeah. it's you can't have one without the other yeah and i think that those rotolo boys like they just they can fight they're yeah. obviously finishes Competi- they're like, obviously gamers they deal with the competitive environments really well well that's because they, live, they yeah. lived in it you know yeah they're like what like we're going to adcc worlds like there's nineteen thousand people here yeah how cool was it so to like, see jujitsu with such a crazy crowd and like a out. knowledgeable <clears throat> crowd too you know like i think one of the things that made it cool to watch is when you could see something real subtle position wise yeah. and then the crowd would go fucking well, crazy it's yeah. like one dude but gets you know they're gonna get the two points and then everyone just like loses their mind you got the two points and you know, and you know he's up and that there's only like a minute left like everyone was yeah following on yeah, yeah. and you you like what you got excited about the crowd got excited about it, it wasn't like a so i think a lot of times with mma like the crowd's just there to see they want to see some blood they want to see that shit but they might not necessarily understand well good examples like when you're fighting on the cage yeah it's like nah like an underhook here is fucking huge like if if they can get yeah. that back then that's as big you're as looking landing for like an the elbow. one thing that they needed to get out and it's like the underhook and then they get it and you're like well you're pretty much on your way you yeah know? you're out now basically yeah yeah so it hasn't it's, happened yet but you know it's yeah gonna. and it seemed like the adcc crowd was like super knowledgeable and then like dude to finally have gordon just as the best in the world and now no like, one can say anything about it at 70 percent, you, and you're like he There's is no one is gonna be him. yeah well that's like this that's another th- so him and kate are like in jujitsu where do you guys go from here yeah and but see i don't think gordon's a fighter in the same way no no not at all they're different they're like i don't think he wants to do plans. mma you know yeah no not at all he's also like not the most likable person but Dude, it doesn't matter like can i throw a super match at you yeah gordon ryan <laughs> gordon ryan versus kaz match from have in a wrestling match in a cage Oh, in like a jiu-jitsu grappling match. I think Gordon's still just like... How dope would... It would be It would be sick. And I think because Hamza is such a like gamer, yeah. it would give him a bit of a scrap, but Gordon's so good. But could you imagine the respect <laughs> that jiu-jitsu gets when you see a guy like... I mean, obviously it's like, but if it was a fight, he would... Do, imagine, but I just, think Khabib... Khabib... But he's not big enough, I don't reckon. I don't even think Hamza really is too, but... But he'd be as... He he'd could, be bigger than, obviously, yeah. him, but it's like, it's not... What um, about like John versus Gordon? I actually think that would be better. Especially if you add in the cage and shit like that. Yes. Put it in somehow, favor it in a way towards John. A little bit, just a tiny bit. Like in a way that maybe puts Gordon on a little bit of a, like a, a handicap. Yeah. And I think because John's be done that. those back in the day. Do you remember? He did some like sub only things. Yeah. Do you go What's type into called? YouTube? Type in um, type in uh, John Jones versus Chael Sonnen. Oh yeah, that's right. And that Do was on remember? Submission Underground. Oh no, it was in the cage. Like there was some. It was one of the. I think it was. Oh, they actually fought for real too. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, that was a bad search. Go down. Um, Maybe do jujitsu. Or like, yeah, or grap- no-gi. grappling maybe. Type in grappling into the... um, Because then now Chael the owns the... Yeah, because it's like his... It was his thing, I was pretty sure. Ellen, yeah. I do double P. I don't know why. Uh, I'm not even coming up with anything. Oh, man, I was Who sure. Who not? did Who did John fight then? Oh, there it is. Um... Chosen, I will not be grappling John Jones. Luke Holcord likely grappling John Jones. Also, oh, maybe they didn't. Yeah, I can't. But anyway, John did. Oh, no. Because it, it was Submission no, Underground, it which was, is what Chael owns. It was Dan Henderson. Type in John Jones versus Dan Henderson. That's uh, that's yeah. who it was. Yeah. But yeah, so like he's done and he fucked uh, him up. And yeah, there you go. So nice. <laughs> 
Submission. Dude, 4.8 million views. Just turn the volume down on this so we don't get fast forward in there a bit. And because, yeah, yeah Chael owns this. So it's. Yeah, like- yeah, yeah, yeah. But Dan Henderson was like all American. Like that's what yeah. he was kind of known for. But yeah, so yeah, imagine John versus Gordon in. Yeah, oh. I think John versus Gordon would be good. He's just a straight beast though. And he's a competitor as well, like a fighter, a competitor, yeah, yeah, a yeah. solution artist. He a solution comes. artist. I like that. Yes. I like that. That's like, well, that's, I think that's what you could, if you, it's hard, the argument of like, what's the best gym? There isn't really a best gym, but if you want a gym, like that's going to come up with a, like a really good game plan, like Jackson, Jackson would yeah. definitely be the spot, you know, like they always come up with a really good solution. I think like that's, and then add that to his mindset like just his like presentness in competition and then like his abilities then you've just got like the best in the world well i think that with with the rotolo brothers too like their solution artists like the way that um cade submitted locky like dude that (laughs) even locky i think i saw locky's post and it was just like yeah i get it like (laughs) he was like oh i did well like i'm happy with my performance and um cade just you know did better like at the end of the day like at my own game yeah and no one there like Lockie would have been uh i studied that guard retention series that him and um ari did for like i pretty much spent a year doing it Mm. and it's like i legit never got armbarred one time from north south ever like ever and i'm sure that he wouldn't have ever been armbarred in that like the way that Kate and it was just like you just see the dude go bink done the yeah, as soon as he grabbed the arm and then the, the like, obviously trying to get the leg over, the leg is obviously really important. There was a few people, I saw Cade post it. He was like, there was a few people that were upset about me kicking um, Lachlan in the head. He's like, I'm not kicking him in the head. I'm trying to get my yeah. foot over, which yeah. is obvious. Like, everyone knew that, but it was just, like, how aggressive he was doing it. But without that leg, like, if, like, Lockie had gotten it away and out of it, then obviously there you're no pretty much, bar. there's yeah. no armbar. Yeah. And so... And doing the, like, the kicking, in a sense, keeps Lockie... Um, Having to... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ac- um, kind of, yeah, active with trying to, yeah, defend it. And so that's when the arm gets extended at the same time. So it, um, it was just, like, so beautiful. Yeah. Like, how he did it. But that's, like, not a technique <laughs> that you would... You know what I mean? That's not, like, a thing that you teach. That's not a reaction even, like, Lockie was expecting. He it from, like, a... He didn't hit it from a position yeah, that you yeah, would be, like, yeah. oh, yeah, and then you transition to the arm. But there was no... It was just, like, I just grabbed an arm. Yeah. Pretty much, like... Yeah. A, and you can see but from the perfect timing yep. in a nullified game when it's away from what Lockie's best at. Yep. So like that was perfect. And and you could see that when Cade beat um uh Mika in the final was that that it was just like a straight foot lock pretty much. And it's just like jumped on a foot lock and it's like that could be it's the competition thing yeah, of the any Saturday like at on, an open mat. Yeah. You know, you're just like, fuck, caught yeah. me, you know. Yeah. And then he's doing it at that. And that I think not a lot of people level. have that kind of level of intensity from the get go. It's yeah. just like that like they both are just like, we hit a win. Like we don't we don't care which is like a hard thing to translate into jujitsu, I think. Like when you're fighting yeah, like that yeah, intensity. I'm just gonna like hit hard, hit fast at the at the beginning. Whereas like that intensity in Jiu Jitsu you sort of like oh well i've got to you know get it to get the ground grips, and then get, yeah. mm, and do a b and c whereas they're just like whatever's anything we're just going to make it we're yeah. going to create the opportunity for a sub basically i'm taking a limb home yeah <laughs> that's the only option yeah, yeah which is sick uh, so and sick then gordon work. fucking up gavel i think was just insane like it just i didn't love gavel's post um fight speech bro same you eh? went to mexico and you got stem cells and I, like we get your knee and for sure you might have been injured but that was like a you day and night up. like that was a lot and it was it was like the first time i've seen galval on the back foot for an entire match mm. you know what i mean there wasn't a point um i think maybe there was like he attacked the leg maybe or it was the other way around I don't even know. I think like there was like a single leg exit at some point. Yeah. 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 That was it. Like, yeah. that's not even really a moment. That's no. like a, <laughs> no. it's like a maybe. It's yeah. still like a 50 50 kind of area. The I'm pretty much back foot the whole time. And yeah. It's like, whoa, bro. And Galfile's the guy. I'm like, I'm giving him that. Like, absolutely. Like, years and years and years of achievements don't, you know, defy you in comparison to one loss. I think but, that it, um, I think that it probably. It's probably, well, I hope that it sparked almost a new era in jiu-jitsu where you can't do what Gavao did. Yeah. Because he won and it was just like a super fight and a super yeah. fight. And it's, and it's like, that's all that he would do in, you know, like kind of almost every two years to a mm. point. And it's just like, 
I think that to be the best, like, and that's what you see, like a drop off in like his jujitsu in a sense, like, and especially it was like ADCC rules. I'm just going to be a beast at wrestling. I'm going to get my, like the way that he beat Penny, you know, it's just like grinded dude down with wrestling. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, well, cool. Now you've got a dude that like has every tool and is just, and like, just as strong and, and has been fighting yeah. over and over and over will fight anybody like desperate for matches yeah. and it's like an active guy and you can see like the progression in actual jujitsu yeah and he, like you can tell from like his instructionals and stuff the way he's like developed his own yeah um stuff away from john Danaher. so it's like it's kind of like you obviously Gordon could be a coach on his own, absolutely. Mm. But, like, he obviously, like, takes a lot of knowledge from um, John and everything like that. But, like, his... And John's, like, one of these crazy minds that are, like, obviously influencing everyone. But at the end of the day, Gordon's got his own ideas about things. And he's just like, hmm. That's when you start to, like, really surpass the... Yeah. The master kind of thing. But it's crazy. I just wonder who or, like, what happens now. Like, he's 20 fucking what? Five, six, seven. Yeah, something crazy. She's just like, dude, you're doing this for a long... He had the year and a half off or whatever. It was like nearly two years or something. Yeah. Um, with the stomach stuff, which sounds rough, but um, I, know. I mean, I don't really think that hindered him at all, though. Like, he's still current. And when you come back, win a super fight like that and your division yeah. on the same weekend. Fucking animal, way. I can't even, like, I don't even... That's what, though, like, that's... You gotta have people like this in... Um, in and around you and actively competing like on places yeah, that you yeah, can yeah. watch so you can just be like, I wouldn't... I ain't shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would need to go to training five more times today. Yeah, But yeah. you feel okay about myself. Like, that's so cool. Oh, yeah, he's a fucking legend. So yeah. what what's coming up for you now? You uh, got anything like set on the horizon or just waiting? I'm just waiting, to be honest. I'm trying to move some things around um, and I've really been spending... Um, obviously, I got that last surgery... Maybe it was like, I think it's nearly th- two months ago, two and a bit months oh, ago. Oh, so something. quick, like recent. Yeah, kind of pretty much. And then I went to New Zealand and um, spoke with those guys too. So I'm um, probably looking to like move to there as well. Um, Where are you going to train out of the city? Yeah. yeah it Fuck, makes that'd sense. be dope. Yeah. It's just like, that's a no brainer kind of thing. And, um, but it's just obviously doing that's easier said than done. So just moving my things and trying to. Um, are you going to like be based there or just do camps there? I can be based. Fuck, I, yeah. I was. Like I went to go ask if I could do camps there and um, Eugene um, kind of obviously being smart and all knowing um, was just like, oh, obviously I would rather you be here in the in-betweens as well because that's where the growth happens. And I was like, that's absolutely correct. That's what he I think He was like, too. you're one of us. Yeah. Come home. <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that too. And I was like, look, that just lines up with everything that I've been doing on my own like journey um with like my culture and stuff like that i'm like it's about that time and it just feels right and That's sick. it's i it felt welcoming the gym felt like home and all these other things so it just kind of like yeah i just let things happen in a sense um so yeah I just, and then obviously i just need to work my way back there and obviously i want to be there for a little bit before i take up a fight and then do a camp and blah 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 um but i think indifferent to the last the original surgery that i got i definitely want to take my time this time and that's why i've been training a lot recently um kind of like doing the two or three days um but just like nothing too intense and if i feel like my body's you know not yeah, dealing yeah, with it yeah. then i'll just taper off or take a night off or whatever so it's like no it's like that kind of um volume but without the pressure and stuff so that's been really good and trying to get my cardio back so that when i do go over there i can pretty much just slide in yeah. a couple like yeah. a month or a couple of weeks of you know getting used to everyone then take a take a fight and do well and nothing but from here so yeah all positive things i think for the next like um like like we said like i've had a career and i kind of like didn't realize until i stopped and had a look and um for that reason i just want to make the most of these next few years so you're like, just in your prime yeah like, or not even in your prime yet you well, know i don't like, even like no like it's hard to and then because i'm like oh i looked back and then obviously now i got the injury and i'm saying like, am i on the end of my prime or am I in my prime but you might not have even I hit don't it know. yet yeah you, like literally you could be just fully walking into like the best you know next yeah. few years of your life and I, th- I, th- I positively think I am um but then always it's in the back of mind um is this I gonna hold up for that and I think it will like I think it's fine like uh, and um the people that are around me and that the advice I'm getting I'm, I, I think I'll be fine but you just never know I think it, I think it just puts things in perspective like anything can happen at any moment I've been 
10 years and I've had no injuries. This is my first injury. So that's like pretty crazy in itself. But, you know, any any turn can can come with a different um, opening. And, and I've kind of accepted that too. So I think that's given me even more motivation to be like, I'm just like hitting this hard in these next few years, giving it everything. And if it doesn't come to fruition, it doesn't come to fruition. But at the same time, I like I want more than anything to be a world champion. But if there's things that are out of my control that stop me from doing it, then okay. So I'm just going to work on what I can control. So these next few years, hit them hard, go like change my lifestyle for the best. And, um, you know, it all in the favor of becoming a world champion. So moving to New Zealand is definitely one of those things. That's so sick. Well, I yeah. believe in you. You're a G. I appreciate and, you. And uh, I can't wait to do this again. Eh? Yes, definitely. As usual. This has always been a pleasure. So it was really cool to come back and, um, and just reminisce from, especially where I was when I did this last time. To yeah, now. yeah, yeah. And um, with just with the underlying knowledge that we always have great conversations. Nah, I enjoyed it. Well, so, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon. De- yes. Try and get a roll in at some point. Yes, come through or vice versa. Dope. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.